Hello everyone, welcome to the session. Am I audible? Can somebody confirm this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, fine. I'll just share the... the live streaming link on the chat so you can uh, later watch this. Okay, fine. So welcome everyone. So this is our first uh, project-based session for AppDev1, right? And uh, in this session, we are uh, basically going to discuss uh, about certain things that you are facing with the question statement and how to go about them, OK? So if there are any doubts, uh, I'm open to take. Hello, sir. Mm, yes. Uh, sir, uh, I have a doubt. Because I took both the theory and project cases to all together in this term hmm. only. And hmm. I have no prior ex experience with this app, dev uh, app development course. Hmm. So uh, can you please guide me through this, how to go along with this? Yeah, so I mean, uh, generally, uh, in the in the orientation, if you have uh, gone through the orientation or may have attended the orientation, uh, for, the, for this term, we have uh, uh, what we have done, what we did was we uh, suggested students to take the theory course and take the project course later. Okay. So, because we thought that, okay, some students that, that are new to the course are facing, might be facing issues initially and then uh, might drop the course or defer their project in the next term. Okay. So, that was happening with some student. Necessarily, uh, is not the case that it will happen with everyone. Okay. So generally, what we uh, uh, what we want to say is, if you are taking this course and doing the project together, uh, just follow along the content that is there, okay? And uh, there are multiple. There can be multiple ways in which you can start project. But first, uh, as we are as we are in the week second, right, where we are going to uh, study HTML and CSS. Uh, get a grasp of what HTML is and how you can create uh, templates and uh, work on it with the help of uh, the screencast that we are going to have, uh, the content that is there, and obviously the open session that we are going to have on Saturday. Right. So just get an idea of how to create HTML files. With that idea, what you can do is, uh, given the wireframe, what you can do is just go through the wireframe and get the, even in the question statement, you are given a couple of examples which you can, um, which you can refer, okay? So that is not for completely copying. Uh, with the copying, I mean, you don't have to create an exact replica of those because there will be some functionalities in those applications that are very uh, sophisticated, right? So we don't want to go into that details. Just select from that uh, reference and in the from the question statement, what is uh, there that you can do, okay? Uh, with the with that idea, you just uh, create the front end of it. What is front end? The HTML pages that you are going to see. Doesn't matter. If they don't. Uh, doesn't matter if they don't work. If they don't work, meaning clicking on a button, you are getting certain things. For example, in grocery store app, I might want to buy something. So clicking on buy, it is uh, actually buying something. That is not what we are looking for, right? Uh, for the front end development, we are only looking at that the button exists. Okay. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Uh, yes, sir. So, so uh, like, see, hmm. which questions are you uh, like suggesting for the reference? Questions? Yeah, you talked about some questions. You will suggest that you have to practice some questions for the reference. No, no, no. Not the, not the questions. We have given applications as a reference. So that is there in the project slide. Okay. Right? So in the, wait, I'll show you. In page number four. Okay, page number four of the presentation, you have two uh, examples. That is, one is Big Basket. I mean, I'm definitely sure that everyone has heard of it. And the second is Blinkit. So what are these? These are uh, online uh, grocery store applications. Okay. They will give you an idea of how an application should look like. And your problem statement will give you an idea of what needs to be excluded rather than included. Right. So when you when you go through an application like one, one such as uh, Big Basket, you'll see there are so many things. Okay, which are not really relevant to the course, which are not really relevant to uh, the tech stack of this course, right? This is for your reference. So from the question statement and from the from the view of Big Basket, you will know that, okay, these are the things that I don't want to create. These are the things that I don't want to actually focus on. And these are some basic things that I have to focus on. Okay, 
Uh, another thing is uh, is the actual look, right? So we might not be very good with uh, actually placing certain things on a web page, right? So we are not very good with uh, designing of a web page, but we can have a basic understanding of how certain components are placed, right? That you will be getting very clearly in the coming week. Okay, by end of this week, uh, when we'll have open sessions and everything, uh, it should be clear to some extent, definitely. Uh, everything after that depends on. Uh, uh, I mean, that depends on the your practice, how much efforts you put in. Okay. So, so is it uh, doable with the theory course, right? Theory course by itself is the complete uh, guide to doing the project. Okay. So, okay. theory course does not, uh, I mean, don't take it literally that there will be only theory based questions. Okay. Week one, we have uh, discussed numericals. So, we have not introduced the practical part of course yet, but we will be doing it from this week because we have now introduced one of the tech stack that is HTML and CSS. Okay. So these are very important technologies required to create the front end of project, right? So it's not that we gave you some questions and activity uh, and in, in the form of activity questions and practice questions and you solve that and we expect you to know everything. Okay. So uh, you can expect. So if you want to get an essence of how are these coding sessions would go on, you can take an experience of the screencast, right? The way the screencasts are delivered, uh, just like doing certain things hands on, which you can follow along and also ask your doubt, right? So there will be one added component that you can unmute just as uh, you're asking now. So you can just simply unmute, ask your doubt, get it clear and continue with what I'm doing, right? So what is screencast? Uh, yeah, so see there in the theory course that release that gets released every Friday. So you get two uh, different types of videos. Okay. One is related to the content of course. Okay. One is related to content of course on which certain activity questions are defined and uh, given to you. Okay. So what does that give? That gives you an idea of what basically are we going to learn in the week. Okay, which is definitely going to be one of the tech stack of the entire course. Okay, screencast is a practical support to what you are learning in that theory part. Okay, so that is there. And then apart from that, we will be having uh, live coding sessions uh, such as uh, we had in the last Saturday, right? So week one, we do not generally introduce any coding part. So we take the numerical aspect of it, right? From week two onwards, it will be purely or uh, completely coding based. Okay, so screencast is just the practical added component where you will get to know, okay, how certain things are, are to be done practically. Uh, you will briefly get it because uh, you, they are not that extensive. They just give you uh, what we call a pointer to how to go about things. Okay. If you, yeah, so if you're new to the course, it would be my suggestion that you do not miss any of the live sessions. And uh, right. I like, uh, I can, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can hope here that uh, it is doable. Like I can watch the lectures and the screencast and all the tutorials, and then I can go along with the project also. Right. Yeah. Simultaneously. Right. Right. Some efforts have to be put because uh, definitely you will be having other courses also along with this, right? Yes. Yeah. So that has to be taken care of, right? So every day, if you if you uh, around if and around if you put two hours. That should be okay, uh, given the deadline. Okay. okay. Yeah. And focus. Uh, yeah. So one more thing. This is a general thing to everybody. Uh, you may have seen that in the question statement, uh, the the requirements of the entire project has been divided into three things, right? So the core requirements, recommended, and the optional. Okay. So that is the sequence you should follow. You should first look at the core requirements, get the core requirements embedded and you know incorporated in your application then go for recommended and then go for op option. Okay. Okay. Sir. Thank you. So, yeah. So, I mean, you first learn HTML, CSS, but sometimes some people get very optimistic about CSS and start, you know, spending a lot of time in designing the application. So, uh, you should know where to stop. Okay. So can okay. we use Bootstrap for the front end? Yes, yes, definitely you can use Bootstrap. Okay, okay so I'll go with uh, raised hands, okay? So so that we have continuity, okay? So the next would be Bharat. Okay, before that, uh, I'm not sure. I, I forgot yes. the name who asked me the question. Uh, before that, was I clear in uh, giving you the answer? 
Yes, I have three questions. So, hmm. firstly, can we use a database for the images that we have talked about? A database for the images, meaning uh, what images are you talking about? Can we? So, part of the project statement says that we have to have images for uh, you know sections and, and products. So, uh, and and of course, the admin is able to change the images and all of that. The images is there in the question statement? I'm not sure. I hope so. I think yeah, they're there. No, no, images is not there because see, images will have a lot of uh, on the front page, right? So images, images. Yeah, so I don't see images. Uh, yes, on page seven. Okay. On page seven, core inventory management, edit a sectional ah. category. Hmm. Change name, type, or image. Edit a section name. Yeah, so that is all right. If you are having images, then you can. Okay. I was taking it as a mandatory thing. So no, no, no. Uh, so see, the thing is, um, uh, okay. Just let me share uh, the hmm. project statement also, so that I can uh, uh, tell you wh what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hmm. So can you see my screen? Yeah. 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 Right. So if you see here in the in the grocery store here, right? Yeah. Each section category will have ID and name. So this is what we think should be there. Apart from that, whatever you feel is important should be added as one of the columns, attributes. Okay. So, yeah. right. And this is the bare minimum. So that's why I have not added image hmm. anywhere. Uh, if you think image is required, then definitely you can. Okay. So that is more of a, what Agreed. we call. That page does not have, yes. Yeah, so that is more of an aesthetic look to it, right? So, I mean, I cannot have a, a very basic HTML and add images at the same time. All right, so okay. if you so want to... as a hmm. optional um, add-on, if, if you want Okay, considering... So since I've been you... working on it for a bit. Hmm. 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 So, right. so right. Yeah, so considering that you really want to add images, what you can do is, uh, later on when we uh, go ahead with Flask, okay? So there, there is a component of static files. Okay, so static files you can simply add uh, uh, manually in the static files all the images and directly can use it. Actually, I was having a problem with that. So I've done this course last in the last term, and hmm. uh, I have added the static files and I have created all those all that stuff and I'm able to change the images as well. I'm having issues with when when I'm coming back to the page because it's a get request. Uh, you know, the image goes back to the default image, uh, so to speak. Uh, so I'm having issues with that. That's why I thought that if I have a database and I uh, save the file name to that database to the last file, then uh, then you know the, the last file would be rendered whenever the yeah. whenever the page definitely, change definitely. Save to the because section. see, so, uh, so saving the image on the static file is probably one of the uh, easiest way. You can definitely go and add the image name on the database and then render it. Call it and render it. No issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. we can have a database. That, that was yeah. 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 So database so has to be SQL. Yes. Yeah. SQL. Hmm. Okay. The second question. Uh, can we have a database for users and admins, or I mean, or do we have to have fixed number of uh, admins or a fixed set of users? No. 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 That is. Uh, I mean. No, no rule on fixed numbers on uh, fixed numbers of admin okay. or uh, users. Anybody can come in and okay. So there is no fixed numbers. You can create models for admin users, whatever you want. Okay. And last question: uh, Can you use the bergzoo.utils for secure uh, secure file? Surely. Yeah. yeah yes. Again, to do with right. Right. You can. Thank you. Okay. So Bergzoo, see the thing is uh, Flask. Uh, underlyingly works with the workshop, right? So, I mean, I want to create an application on Flask and want that to get, uh, I mean, want that to work with a web app, work as a web application, it definitely makes uses of workshop, right? So, ultimately, you're using it. So, there is no uh, point saying that you cannot use certain okay. things. I was confused because framework says Flask, but I was not sure if Flask. Like, yeah, so like right, you can you can definitely content. so frameworks uh, Flask uses WorkZip to connect to the net. So it is like uh, the uh, the CGI for that. Okay. okay. 
that is the reason we call it wsgi okay correct okay anyways you can use no issues with that okay next okay i'll stop there is no requirement uh samit hi samit yeah hello yeah yeah tell me yeah <clears throat> if you can go to the presentation page number slide number 7 Sorry, I by mistake raised and instead of sharing the screen. Sorry, give me a minute. Now, page number seven, slide seven. Hmm. Okay. And then, if you can just uh, clarify the point number three, that is remove section. Hmm. Remove section. So See, yeah. Actually, I built hmm. my model. with hmm. store manager and multiple user right yeah so what you are saying is what is this admin uh samit uh, not able to hear you can you hear me others can others hear me yeah we yes, can yes sir yes sir yes hello oh, okay then so yeah hello. yeah samit yes yeah, samit So yeah whenever i try to delete the store manager try to delete uh, any product or uh, mm, any section or category uh, there is a separate admin who who will grant it is the model should look like in that way no 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 that is not the thing see this statement has a very simple meaning that you being the owner for example you have a phone you are the owner of the phone you want to delete an image of uh something in your phone okay so what happens uh you click on delete and it asks it prompts you whether you really want to delete or not just a confirmation oh self confirmation that's it okay it is not that that i am deleted and that goes to the admin section he will delete give the permission and then i come back to delete it's not like that no no no, no. we don't want to add a third component to the application right so Hello. it's just that uh, you being a manager being a pro, uh, co inventory manager you want to delete something right you have that right so when you, you want to delete me? yeah yeah i can hear you hello i can hear you some can others hear me yes yes, yes we can okay, some issue with is uh, can i ask a follow up to that question Yes, sir. Very good. If you are deleting, um, if the admin is deleting, and Hello. I am putting just like a like a mock password. Mock password. Hello. Uh, yeah, just like like you said, a confirmation. Like sometimes some web pages have a pop down that comes from up top. So let me hear you. Hello. Um, yes, sir. Let me can hear you. Yeah, actually, I lost connection in between. I am not clear. Okay, I'm not okay. able to hear you anything. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But can you hear me now? No, it's clear. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, yeah. this uh, this is just a confirmation yeah. that you can, you know, that you get when you delete, when you try to delete something, so that you don't abruptly delete anything, right? So that is the only meaning of this. Okay. Then uh, okay. fine. Then please go to the page number eleven. Yeah. So just a follow up. There was a follow up question on this. Oh, Bharat, that there can can there be a password on which uh, when you want to delete it asks for a dummy password and you got so yeah that is yeah. can additional functionality Bharat you can definitely have it. Okay. So, so here okay. admin is the store manager. Ha, sorry. Can we assume that admin is the store manager? Yes, the admin, store manager, inventory manager, all are same thing. So I have also created a thread on that for on Discord. If I am still sharing my screen, you should be able to see it. Just give me. Yes, we can. so from a role perspective a regular uh, employee can add inventory when the shipment arrives the store manager can do the category so like higher level of entitlement yeah so we are basically talking about the so there are only two units one a store manager okay which is also the admin which is also the inventory manager right so he has all the uh, uh, what we call all the provisions or all the rights to do the prod operations on the uh, sex, uh, categories or uh products okay and on the other end there are only users who will just go ahead uh, have a look at uh, things uh, put them in cart buy and all sorts of thing right 
sir if we kind of create an entitlement there are two classes of users regular users and let's call it super users right so regular mm -hmm. users can add an item to existing category but they can't create a new category or a delete a new category right whereas store manager or inventory you know they can do a lot more function uh, like access or rights to do entry mm -hmm. into a certain table or delete a record from a table will that be a fair statement yeah that is there but uh, uh, the thing is uh, that that happens when there is a hierarchy of people working for a single application right here we don't want to do that we just want to create one person responsible one person or group of persons responsible for uh, creating deleting managing the uh, what we call the product or sections and other set of people that is the simple consumer who can just log in uh, buy something store for later or uh, uh, store for later and then buy. that's all okay got it so basically the store manager will do the inventory management module the regular mm -hmm. users are not interested They'll yeah just... yeah yeah oh, right so regular problem. that's the whole thing right so regular okay. users will not be uh, able to add anything anywhere the only provision that they get is uh, they can browse through the products go through the sections uh, probably they might want to buy three four things at a time so they can cart so this is what putting one uh, product in other section so other section is fixed here that is the cart Uh, is that clear, Devish? Yes, sir. Okay, so we don't want to see. So the thing is, when there is hierarchy, there are distributions. So there is role-based um, uh, distribution on what one person will do. But here we are don't, we are not really bothered about all that uh, hierarchy thing. Okay, right? okay, sir. So we call that uh, role-based access control. We are not looking mm -hmm. for that. We are basically uh, simplicity. There is a user one, user two, user three. That could be ten users. But user mm -hmm. one is a store manager who will probably go to inventory section. All of the users are not expected to go, but uh, but if somebody wants, they can actually go and do it. There's no restriction from an app perspective. Right. So uh, yeah. So that role base is has to be that much uh, to that extent it has to be uh, taken care of. Right. So for example, if I am a regular user and I log in, I should not be redirected to or should not be given uh, you know uh, directly a button where I can edit things. Right. Because uh, that is something that not uh, a regular user should not do. Got it, sir. So there is still uh, some entitlement. Yeah. Right? Only, yeah. The, only if you use the user ID of a store manager, then only you will see the inventory management module. Otherwise, not. Right. 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 Okay. Yes. Thanks for clarifying that, sir. Or we have to create two login pages for different uh, users and admins. Right. You can do that. So one uh, uh, and the wireframe that I've created for the project also does that, right? So basically, what you can do is either have one login where the login page itself, by looking at the email ID or whatever credentials you are taking, by looking at credential, is able to identify that this is a regular user or admin. That you can do, or you can create two separate pages. One is for simple login or for a user, and one is for the admin login. Both right. are okay. Both easy. are okay. No issues. I think the second think page second option, option is easy to implement as. Well. That's why. That's yeah. why. Right. So uh, whatever is easy is there on the wireframe because you don't want to unnecessarily complicate things. Right. Yes, yes. If you want to take it one step forward, there is a one step forward for every step in the wire. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. sir my second question. Okay, go ahead. So I just wanted to see where the wireframe is in a discussion board. No, 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 no. The wire wireframe is uh, uh, almost finalized. Should be out by tomorrow. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, because I haven't seen it. So, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not there out. Uh, it will be out by tomorrow. Definitely. Sorry, Samit. Uh, go ahead, please. No, 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 no. no. <clears throat> so, if you now refer to page slide number nine, hmm. yeah, yes. In this search <clears throat> functionality, do you want the after searching, I can uh, add that product, buy that product from that page? So basically, what I want is, let's say you have a search functionality, right? So you want to search something. And the results that come out should be clickable that take you to the actual product. Okay. Okay. Clear. Hmm. And then, sir, go to the page number 11. Yeah. Not 11, sorry, 12. Page number 12. No, 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 no. No, sorry, it is 11 only. Sorry. 11. Yeah. What this validation that you want us to do 
in the yeah, validation so, part yeah so there can be multiple ways you want to do right so one is the front end validation okay so in front end validation let's say you are taking email and password as credential okay so front end validation will not mm -hmm. allow any random name to be entered in place of email so it will check that whether this is an email okay first thing second thing is let's say you are having a field password okay somebody just puts in the uh, email and tries to log in okay and does not put the password how do you uh, make sure that he puts the password you need to make that field required right so that is certain things that you have to look at in the front end validation yeah that mean if i set a password and somebody wants to log in with a different password he should be blocked right yeah yeah definitely it is uh, this validation mean only this part yes okay. see the thing is uh, see what it what it says all form inputs all form input field text numbers date etc with suitable messages right so for example what we what we mean to say here is you do not put anything anywhere right so it's like uh, i am putting in my name uh, there is a section or there is a input field called email and i'm just putting my name okay it should not allow that because then it will make the data inconsistent right so the whatever data or whatever credentials for the user are getting stored in the model in the database it will become uh, inconsistent So that is that not what it wherever we have the input field hmm. means input from the user or admin or store manager wherever hmm. in throughout the application all the input field should have a validation check right and this is a recommended feature not the code feature okay fine answer my third thing um hmm. i have uh, progressed quite a bit in this uh, project and now i have very specific issues that okay. uh, how can i discuss those specific issues because unless you have uh, look into my codes or look into my application it's very mm. difficult to make you understand what okay. i want to clarify for that okay. what to do yeah I, i get it so what have what will happen is in the coming week probably coming next two weeks you will be avail you will be uh, i mean you will be able to avail the mentors okay so with the mentors you can either have sessions where you people are joining like this or one to one session okay so in one to one sessions you should be able to share your screen and uh, let them know this mentor means means uh, the instructor like you and others uh I mean, it will be a group of mixed people who are actually uh, proficient in the subject. Okay, okay. They should be able to help you definitely. And till such time, when this uh, this will be, I mean, specialty okay. will be till the deadline. No, no. I mean, when you going to start this? Yeah, so it is uh, under pipeline, and we are actually working on this. So it will be available very soon. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. And till such time if actually i am in stuck in such a position i am not able to move it forward unless that particular specific uh, yeah. thing yeah. get clarified correct correct i understand so we won't let you wait for very long uh, so we are trying to we are uh, uh, actually we are doing that on the what we call a very urgent basis so we'll be able to set out mentors very very soon uh, hello oh. sir mm, yeah yeah so is that it yeah. samit One minute, one minute. Uh, one more last question. Hmm. Uh, if you now go to the next page, that uh, optional page. Hmm. I'm there. No, this is graded. The optional one. So ah, yeah, more. optional one. Ah, yeah, this export feature. Hmm. That you have mentioned this only. Ah, uh, this particular features get exported, or I can export it the entire product. uh feature or in the say in my case the order history whatever user have purchased i store it into their particular table i can export that whatever or you need you this no no see no, no, so it, though these things are given just to give you an idea of what we are trying to say with the statement export okay these are not exhaustive you can decide on what can be added to this or doesn't have to be everything that is given but through this optional feature you just want to see whether we are able to construct the export feature correctly or not correct correct okay got it thank so you what is this export That's feature actually so basically see uh, for example there is a user 
okay and now let's say i am an admin who wants to actually see uh, what are the things happening with my application okay who are who are the people who are regular visitors um, uh, who are what kind of product is being bought very regularly right uh what what are the product that are going out of stock very regularly or very soon that they come in right so that kind of data is required so that i maintain my inventory in a way that products are available anywhere and anytime right so for that what i want i want to get the data and i should be able to export that data into a readable format such as csv or excel file okay so data will be saved in your database you will be you should be able to convert that data from a database file into a file that is external to the application which is csv or excel okay and exporting that file to the admin or store manager no 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 the admin should be able to export it for example see this application is running on my system right but it is on web okay i want that data to appear in my computer in my system okay 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 so, so i can happen uh, so i can export the data in, in your some system. csv format hmm. to my system right so it is it is like i mean we go through certain for example a railway booking platform right irctc okay. we go to that we book a ticket and we download the button in our system yeah. uh, the okay. ticket in our system so that is exporting a file from the application to some different place which is my system in this case okay okay got it sir essentially there are let's say 100 products uh, let's say a report is there top 10 products right hmm what is bringing more revenue so that could be a graph or a table and you want to export that that's what you mean here right that could be many many such yeah, applications it can be either graph it can be either the table the data itself got it so, so thanks it, it has to be in some kind of like when we order on amazon then we get a mail that this was your order so something like that right and you definitely going to uh, definitely are going to have one of the tables that stores that data right product id uh, uh, customer id who bought what so that data will be there in your database right so you just want a feature where this can be downloaded in a system in a in a readable format right so i um, open an excel file you should be able to open this file and see the data right because there can be certain visualizations that i want to do that is out of scope of this application at this point right so i want the data raw data and sir last two question Last two question I have. <clears throat> in this optional optional page, uh, this predict demand hmm. on a product based on previous trends for these two address, uh, can I use some MLP technique uh, to integrate with this uh, Python file and use it? Yeah, the thing is uh, that will I mean that will only load your application. We don't want to do that at this point, right? If you only have so much time. Then go ahead. Otherwise, uh, uh, not required. But I have time. I, I I want to do integrate this thing with my application because most of the feature in the application I already done it. Only few things are left. So one of okay. these is predict demand. So I hmm. want to integrate that. So if I do it in a I mean separate uh, Python file and integrate with this application, is it possible? I mean, definitely. is it allowed? Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, and the extra last question is there is a no. there is a concept of extra feature, right? So there is no definition of what an extra feature can be, right? So anything you do extra which adds to your application or which gives a good user experience to whoever is using the application is definitely a good good thing, right? Okay, and sir, if you just go to the slide number two. Slide number two. Yeah, here you mention we have to do it in Replit.com, but I do it in VS Code. No issues. You can do it locally on VS Code. Okay. Thank you. That's all. See, the thing is, what we, what we want to do is Replit basically is a platform where you don't have to worry about virtual environment. You don't have to worry about DB browser you being used differently. You don't need to worry about terminal. You don't need to worry about shell. Everything is there at one place. So that is why people who are very who have very you know very what we call very superficial understanding of what uh, computer science is very new to the course uh, replit kind of helps that right so that's why this statement is uh, in the support of those students does not apply to everybody okay thank you sir hmm, okay fine so we'll uh, go to the first yeah uh, I'll, 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 
Can I mention about the mentors? You can. Uh, we uh, had. Hmm. Yeah, we had got the form for uh, if we wanted the mentors, and uh, that yeah, line was yesterday. Right, right. That was there. Yeah. So just for wanted to mention that. Okay, okay. Well. Yeah, so I'll just uh, yeah, so I'll just clarify what Aditya is saying. Basically, what we did was we. Uh, I mean, everybody uh, here may have got that form. So we shared a form where we we uh, we asked some. Um, I mean, we try to get some background of what you what you are doing with the course. Are you the new joinee? You are repeating the course or whatever it is, right? And there is one prominent question that whether you want a mentor support, and that is only for the students who are who want to finish and submit their project within this term, right? So that was one form that was uh, uh, circulated. Okay, so you many of you may have filled that, got the. Uh, uh, may have taken the mentor support help right so that is there and that will uh, so the responses of that form is with us okay and uh, based on that we need to know that okay how many mentors are required how many uh, or uh, each mentor should get how many students right so that is for that data okay so what is this slide is it the project presentation itself I'm getting on the chat okay anyways so let us go to the next uh, next student. Where are the participants? Uh, Ajay. Hello, sir. Hi. Actually, actually I was new. I'm new in this course. Uh, I'm doing parallelly with uh, theory. So how so how can I start? Uh, and another thing is I didn't understand the slide. Can you little bit clarify that thing? Which slide? This one? Uh, yes, that slide. And how many, how, what kind of thing I need to require? Should I require uh, JavaScript? Uh, no. So, see, let me go to the text stack. Yeah, this is the text stack, right? Frameworks yes. to be used. So, basically, we are, uh, we will be working on Python as our backend language. Okay? Yes. We will need understanding of Python. And we, we assume that you have an understanding of Python because you have already taken yes. Python course in your foundation level. Okay, so uh, for this application to be made completely with every requirement, what we want is we want you to understand what Flask is. Okay, it is a it is a web based framework that uh, web based framework meaning it is a uh, framework that allows you to create web application. Okay, then there is templating with the help of Jinja two library. Okay, Bootstrap for HTML generation and styling. Okay, and then let, uh, definitely this uh, application is associated with a lot of data. So you'll be definitely requiring a data storage. So what we want is we want SQLite database to be used. All right. Now, how do you get this technologies to understand? These will be taught in upcoming lectures every uh, every week. Okay. So there will be the theory content on this. There will be practical content on this. Live sessions, open sessions, and solve with instructor sessions to help you with. Uh, uh, help you build the basic understanding of this uh, uh, this uh, uh, frameworks. All right. Okay. Another thing. Apparently, I've taken uh, DBMS codes. So this uh, database is uh, should I create myself or it is already made? No. So you have to create. Uh, you have to create everything from the scratch. Okay. 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 All right. So is it framework uh, or SQLite is framework or SQLite is the database. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, SQLite is the database. We will be in integrating this database with our Python based framework class to be able to store data and you know to be able to manage data, work with the data. Okay, sir. All right. Okay, got this little bit. Yeah, little bit. Don't worry. I mean, we when you go ahead with the theory course, so I mean, don't take this word theory literally. Okay, the theory course does not mean that there is no practical component. The theory course only means that it is not a project course, project part of it. Okay, we have just segregated out project from the theory part. The theory part uh, collectively includes the theory section for uh, theory section. What you need to read and go through to understand what the content is. And second is the practical sections that we will be taking care of from the screencast and uh, uh, live session so that you get the hold of what we are trying to teach. Okay. So when you get the hold of this, you should be able to do the project. Okay. One thing is, the, uh, how many after how many weeks I can uh, do work from this? Uh, see, for, for basically, this? 
yeah right i got the question basically if you re- want to uh, start the project only after getting the complete tech stack uh, you should start after week 6 but week 6 would be too late to uh, start and finish the project yes okay so that's why i'm saying you start working on the project as and when uh, or as we proceed with the course and do that component yes, yes, what we learn from the course okay so for now that uh, uh, what we are so there was a similar question hello ha huh. am i lost yeah you are there i can hear you hello steven csf uh, hello hello am i audible everyone there correct is not good you are yes sir so okay i need to check that sorry yeah. huh. okay so what we are doing is now currently we are in week 2 where we are learning html and css right so we want you to uh, go ahead and try to study uh, html and css by end of week 2 you should be able to do uh, uh, you know considerably good html you should be okay with uh, uh, html and css okay with that knowledge you can work on the all the front end all the templates of the application okay the wireframe will give you the idea of uh, what should be the screen what what are the screen that you need to create okay uh, week 3 you should be able to add the template component week 4 onwards you should be able to add the back end with the help of class okay sir okay uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. i take in uh, i play fill the form for uh, mentor when hmm. my mentor will be allowed allow okay. uh, yeah that is in the that is in the pipeline that is happen that will be happening soon okay okay okay, okay. thanks sir Yeah, so I I saw a very interesting message here. Hello, Ajay. I have same issue. DM me and let's do it together. Yeah, definitely share your thoughts, but do not share your project. Okay, you will be flagged and plagiarism, and there will be no second chance given, right? So the way you think, see, uh, understanding concept is different. Doing something together will definitely biased with you know two things being very similar. So you need to avoid that. Okay, so Nikumar, you also uh, have to take care of that. Definitely, there is no stopping and there is no restriction from our side. Uh, do the project uh, uh, together, get the concepts together, try to understand the concepts together. But please create your own code. No sharing of code allowed anyway. But sir, sir, everyone created same website, so hmm. code can be similar a little bit. No, that 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 generally doesn't happen, Ajay. Unless you copy from somewhere, that doesn't generally happen. Okay, okay. because. even the project statement is uh, same the core functionality the way you implement certain functionality right the functionality is you choose that you want to do and you don't want to so there is a lot of combinations okay sir i don't know okay so, so, so since you are talk uh, on the same topic you, you are giving the wireframe that means the interface will be similar but the implementation should be different right okay, yeah and again wireframe is just a reference again there is yeah. you just have to uh, uh it's not that it has to be word to word or point to point uh, taken into consideration okay so, but generally if you issue the wireframe you would see most of us would tend to copy similar the ui part but i think hmm. how we code the control flow logic it will be different for different students right yeah part, yeah right right yeah. okay so, so what we have what we have done is we have put we have put uh, the look and feel into an optional right so the the people who are only interested in front end or only have time to do the front end should work on it. okay wireframe do you really like that's what happens also uh, you will have a, like a business analyst who will talk to the business users and kind of get some kind of this is how you want to do so they will create a wireframe and then give it to the developers so this is a yeah. reflection of how things work in the real world right yeah so unless there is a wireframe uh, doesn't i mean doesn't matter how many times you read the statement a picture will definitely give you better idea okay so uh, uh, students can directly go and refer to that wireframe somebody can directly go and copy that but i'm just saying that once the wireframe is given don't put this thing this idea in your mind that okay i have to you know uh, very strictly follow this because there will be certain things that were strict uh, sorry there there will be certain things that are tough to implement even on the wireframe so you don't have to worry about those things clear yeah, no yes sir that's a guidance basically we still have flexibility to do our... right 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 that's all all right shailendra uh, yeah good evening sir <clears throat> yeah hi sir, i have a, uh, a humble request to you and uh, actually all the instructors hmm. 
uh could you take the questions and answers to, like question after you have completed the session sir because we have uh, a lot of us might have uh, the time constraints also mm -hmm. okay because uh, means when you have completed a session then all the questions can be taken whoever wants to leave can leave Mm -hmm. See, so uh, yeah, so that would uh, we'll try to apply that on the regular session, Shailendra. So this is a project session, right? Where the agent of this session is to take one-on-one -on -one doubt. Okay. This is only doubt clearing session, sir. Yeah, yeah. Doubt clearing meaning uh, initially. So this is a very first session for a pro project. So uh, you may have gone through the uh, the grocery store uh, uh, question statement, right? There will be definitely there will be certain things that are not clear. So this session, this and probably coming one more session will be there to clear your doubt completely so that without any doubt, you can start working on project without any second thoughts. Okay. The regular session that is there, that is going to be there tomorrow, open activity practice session and open session. We will uh, try to take the content because, uh, yeah, we'll try to take the content first and then take the questions. And that will anyway happen because we will have a lot to deliver. Uh, you can ask students who are already have done the you know theory course. There is a yes. lot that are uh, that is provided in the uh, sessions like uh, activity practice and open sessions. Yeah, right. So I, actually, I told this because uh, in other sessions also this was happening, and uh, we have to stick to the um, session just just like that. The questions mm. uh, are not maybe sometimes relevant to us, sometimes not. Right, right, right. I completely you... understand your point. So you just pair this uh, this uh, project based sessions because see project based sessions. I can only discuss on certain uh, issues that you are facing, right? I won't have anything to give from my side. In the activity practice and open session, there are uh, fixed things that we want to deliver. So we will not stop for, you know, questions and every uh, questions for a complete hour. Uh, we'll start with the session, give the content, and then later on take the questions. Okay. Sure, sir. Also, sir, in uh, this project session also, it, it would be better that uh, if you would explain the project uh, uh, in the first go, then take the session. Uh, because uh, like I am doing it for first time, so mm -hmm. I have no idea uh, how to uh, present this and uh, uh, how to start, where to, how to land up everything. Right. Like that. That's what I'm saying. So this is the very first session and we are not very deep into the content right now, right? Uh, yes. You go through the uh, HTML and CSS uh, content and from probably from next Monday, you will be able to start on something because this uh, Saturday we will be, we'll be having an open session that is solve it instructor session on HTML and CSS, right? So you'll be creating gen uh, static HTML and uh, CSS pages uh, yes. and that will give you something to start working with, right? Uh, uh, but please follow that uh, this in those sessions also, sir, because whenever we miss that and we go to YouTube, we have we are just browsing and looking for the actual content. In, uh, mm, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. So gen this will generally happen for project session, won't happen for regular sessions. Okay. Okay. Sir, okay. okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Yeah. Mohammed Sohel. Yes, sir. Sir, I was uh, done with uh, the theory part last term. Hmm. But I'm still uh, clueless about a lot of things in this uh, project. And hmm. uh, now I wanted to ask, like, uh, how do we start? If you could just uh, tell us, like, uh, from this, you can start, start, hmm. just guide us through, like, uh, start making this first and implement this. We would do it by ourselves. That is All right. uh, sure, for sure. But if you could just tell us, like, start from here, build this first and build uh, that after and go through like this. It okay. would be very helpful. All right. All right. So that sir, I'm not understanding, like, what is uh, that plagiarism part? Like, hmm. can't we just uh, take some help from the uh, Google or there are a lot of sites where we can just uh, get some idea or a, a little bit of code like to save our time, not whole project, but a little bit of code. Like, uh, you understand, like sometimes we uh, do on a general basis. Can we do that? Yeah. So see, the thing is, uh, the little bit of code that you're talking about can be taken from the documentation. Okay. See, the thing is when you, when you search for something on Google, the first five popular things will pop up for everybody who is searching for same thing. Right. Okay. Uh, Consider that you got something, uh, got a logic for adding a product into a cart. You got a logic, it is very good, right? But there are there, there will be hundreds who got the same logic. Okay, so copying code from directly from a uh, internet source will definitely land you in the problem. 
rather what you can do is just break it into chunks and those chunks can be taken from documentation okay now what this what are these documentation that i'm talking about there is documentation for a class there is documentation for html css yeah, yeah. javascript if you required uh, templates right so if you club those things and uh, uh, make your own code definitely there won't be any plagiarism if you get a code just read through it try to understand it and write it in your own terms okay 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 I like right. if we so, uh, hmm. do uh, this project with our friends like i have a friend nearby doing the same like uh, we could uh, work uh, in uh, uh, together on the ideas and implement our own uh, logic to build up the code right right that's what i said to somebody right suni kumar i guess yeah that's what i said so you there is no stopping uh, uh, you people collaborating but the thing is at the end of the day both the project project should be different no yes we yes we understand that uh, like hmm. they cannot be same uh, that is all right and uh, hmm. one more thing Uh, like the what help we would be uh, getting from the mentor i have also filled the form and i have very like time constraint i uh, i just work somewhere also i have mm. exams on uh, like uh, the next month july i have got last uh, exams of college like third year uh, mm. i have exams also so if you could just tell me like bare minimum uh, you can start from here or like uh, do at least yeah, yeah, this yeah. uh, how many now. hours should i give Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to tell you now. Uh, yeah. So that's what I'm going to tell you. That is one thing. And second thing, what was uh, the starting uh, question that you said? Uh, starting question. Uh, the first I question. Asked, like, how do we start? And just hmm. if you could just tell us, like, uh, first you can uh, build uh, this. Ah, right. Then you can go on this. And we will do it by ourselves and watching your live sessions. And uh, one more thing. Uh, now hmm. you will be taking some uh, live session for med one theory if you want to just clear out some uh, past experiences uh, so we would be getting that uh, gmeet link or if we are allowed in that gmeet link uh, so youtube channel is there no so there all the you have taken the course in jan term is it all right yeah so no, med one no, no. this is september term right no sorry may term yes jan jan term yes ha so you uh, uh, yeah so the jan term the med one uh youtube channel do you have access to that yes i have yeah so all the sessions are there the sessions are there if you just uh, we would ask like to ask something uh, like on there if you are like if you could we could attend those lessons i was asking uh directly live yeah. session uh, yeah directly yeah. live session i'm not really sure okay but what you can do is if your content is related to the previous terms live session you can definitely come in and take uh, i mean ask in the project based session okay project. because i will be there in the project based session firstly secondly uh, okay so ta will not be there for you right oh yeah so this is one thing that we can do okay 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 i was asking because i have a friend who is doing the med one theory i could ask from uh, for the gmeet link he would send me if i am allowed uh, there i was asking the same only like if i was allowed there uh, to study with him like sometimes we get uh, like a little uh, like a rust on our brain yeah yeah us. i get yes. it but i am not sure about the uh, i mean how do you i'm not sure about whether it is allowed for you okay what you can do is uh, you could ask and tell me yeah yeah i'll i'll come uh, i'll just get uh, the idea of this and maybe let you know Okay, uh, this is regarding the doubts you want to ask, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, I'll try to do that. And sir, okay, uh, now going forward, hmm, yeah. Next, next session is on Monday, right? Next Tuesday, session. Tuesday. All the project Tuesday. session will be on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday. So if you could just uh, tell in this session, like uh, uh, till that week, you could just uh, uh, try this. Like HTML, CSS, most of the students, uh, maybe. Uh, all right like if they study from youtube also they can just uh, get it if you could just tell us uh, yeah. tell that uh, we you could do this uh -huh. right yeah so yes. let me uh, just share one thing so let's let, let me use this blinket okay uh, yeah. i could have used the wireframe but let me first uh, uh, you know get it confirmed that okay this we can release once that is released we'll be referring to wireframe but okay let me use this blinket okay now you start with the login page okay what do you see the very first uh, uh, page should be the login page okay so you go to the home page of uh, or the home url of uh, your application browser store and it should prompt you to a login page which should be something like this right 
so the the what what is the credential it is taking here it's taking phone number okay what are the credentials we would generally want we would want email or username and password all right, okay. right now don't don't focus on this background it can be a blank all right okay so you that this will be the first page that you want to create so one page for login one page for sign up right for uh, login for people who are already registered to the course uh, not the course the application and second one the people who want to uh, you know join in sign up for the application and also admin page admin page will also have same uh, login no see if you are creating two different pages for login by the by the link itself it will redirect or add an admin to the database right because you are having a different page for admin so there will be different url for admin for uh, a different page for user so there will be a different url for user right so sir uh, we can do this no yeah we can yeah. start working on this we can create uh, two different urls for two different login pages right now don't worry about so this is for, for the people who are starting this uh, project with the course right so you don't need to worry about what url is okay at this point just create a page okay html page login.html you have to create where there is a different one single box here you decide on what credentials to be taken generally we would go with email and password okay there will be one field for email one field for password and then login okay similarly one more so here see what what is written here phone number verification what you can write here admin login user login if you are creating two different pages right now if the user admin login uh, will not have a register page right anybody cannot come and just register as an admin okay only users can come and join in as new users okay so there will be a register page similar to this but they can have more fields right uh, like phone number or uh, email itself because if you are using username you will also have email to be taken from the uh, new user right so there will be three pages now where one page is login for admin one page is login for user and one page is register for user okay uh, then there will be submit button submit button should not do anything because we are not adding any uh, what we call the the back end to this uh, page we are only creating html page front end okay second thing once you log in let me go back uh okay so it, there is no way of going back so i'll just close it and open it again once you log in then what do you see you will see the categories products right so if you see here so these are these are categories da dairy bread and eggs these are categories okay when you click on this then you'll see various products right so there will be one page which shows categories right dairy uh, uh breakfast munchies cold drinks so these are different categories right meat uh, spices personal care all these are categories okay one page for this then you go to any uh, this right so there will be one page for product where you have to show all the product right so if i where, where did i go basically i went into fruits and vegetables so this is one category right fresh vegetable so you see all the products created here so these are dummy data that is added you don't need to actually add the data you don't need to link it with the database you don't need to link it with the controller also right it should be only blank static html pages doing nothing at this point okay but see i want this my card button here i want this login button here i want this card to appear here i want the list of uh, uh, categories here right a search functionality here all these things have to be done by html only or a css only right so that those things you can start working on you can take help of bootstrap for certain classes uh, positioning locating certain things are you getting what i'm saying here yes sir uh, yes sir can, but we yeah. don't have to add these images and all right no no don't have to worry about it only if you want to you know uh, you are you are good with uh, aesthetics you are very uh, profound with uh, uh, bootstrap and everything then you can go ahead and do no no shopping okay so we could just add titles to the products right <laughs> definitely right that is in, that is uh, explanatory enough okay so there will be one page for so we talked about five pages here what are the five pages login for user login for admin register for user okay a page where you see user dashboard where all the categories are there okay a page where you see all the products for a particular category are there okay 
here we are we were able to navigate from one page to the other right that is also not required at this point because the navigation is done through plus okay so this is something Mr. you can, can yeah yeah go ahead uh, so for uh, we can we can create a user as a i mean um, a user creation page a sign up page we should not have a one for admin that is there, right? Admin login. I said. You can't register new admins. No, no. That no, you. Uh, you, can't register. Uh, you should not be able to register, right? For example, uh, Facebook. Okay. So there is one admin I page. Understand. You should not. A user should not be able to create a admin hmm. because that will bring down the whole site. You can be malicious. Hmm. So hmm. that's what we are expecting here as well. You should not be able to yeah. create a create an admin. Okay. Yeah, internally what you can that. yeah internally what you can do because being the developer or uh, or being the admin mm -hmm. you will have access to more things than than a normal user right so you can convert maybe yeah. convert a normal user to admin so that is an additional functionality that you would do right that is not core that's up to that us required, that is up to you that is not a core uh, okay. functionality okay. okay okay thank you sir hello sir Yes, yes, yes. Harshil. Sir, may I ask a question right now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I actually I lost the raise and sorry for the people have raised and I'll come to you. Harshil, go ahead. Yes, the basically I've done the Mad One course in the previous term and I'm jumping ahead right now. I just wanted to ask uh, whether it is mandatory to implement those uh, uh, flash security packages so that uh, in the login pages it becomes necessary that a user is uh, logged in. Because uh, what we can do is actually pass arguments in the URL and it can take us to uh, the actual page. I get it. get it. Get right. it. You want, you're saying that uh, should we incorporate something that does not allow bypassing? Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Bypassing Correct. of arguments. Not required. It is yeah. one of the uh, optional feature, right? Security of an application. If you go through one of the uh, statements here in optional, Uh, okay. Wait. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was written that we we are not concerned with how secure the app is. I think you get it right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. don't need to worry about login payments. Okay. Because in this uh, guidelines itself, one place it was written that it should be a proper login system. So I got confused if it is content. No. Proper. See, proper login system is optional. That one. That's what I'm saying. Okay. 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 Fine. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, sir, there is no need to uh, no need to use Flask security for login. No need, meaning you don't. If you don't want to, if there is a time constraint, you don't have to. Like we can create our own login page by our own method, also. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. See, uh, anyway, you are creating your own login page only. The underlying process, what happens at the back end is the, the back end uh, process. I am talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. You can create your own backend controller for logging in and uh, registering. So I had a doubt. Hmm. So uh, when we uh, when we run our app application, the first one is base HTML which runs. So in that, are we supposed to have uh, two options? Like uh, it's either admin or users. And if you click user, then you can ask uh, login or create new user. Yeah, you can do that. No issues. So that's how we should do this. Yeah, yeah, that you can do. Okay. Right. So here we are assuming that you are creating two different forms for uh, admin and user login, right? So there can be a one uh, what we call a welcome page or a landing page, which takes you uh, to the which which comes when you go start running your application, and then there you see two buttons where uh, you want to log in as admin or log in as general user, right? Clicking on one, you will go to the login page, respective login page. Okay, sir. Right. So you can do that. No issues. So, sir, uh, like we can just make a user login page and an admin uh, login page, right? Uh, for now, and add some like categories or like that, that page you showed us something yeah, like so that, right? Yeah, so five pages. Yeah, five pages we talked about. Yes. Okay. So you can start working so on those five pages. pages. And if you see, if you directly, if you'll directly see this blanket, it will be a, a nightmare, right? So many images, things moving. Okay, location. I mean, positioning of elements so accurate. You don't have to worry about all these things. Okay. Uh, the just wait for a day. Tomorrow the wireframe will be out and it should be 
you know considerably less uh, intriguing okay that will be more better uh, i mean that will be better if you go through the wireframe and create the, the template the five templates that we talked about uh, okay also, we'll sir for could you just explain the search functionality and how are we supposed to search for items because we don't do natural language processing that uh, yeah so see the thing is for example if you have something called as if you want to search for bread okay so it keeps on you know changing with the for example if i remove this d it again refreshes the page and does that right you don't have to worry about these things okay this is a front end mechanism which we are not really bothered about in madvan course okay what you need to do is let's say i type in bread and then i click on search okay then it should look for this string only okay you don't have to worry about the nlp yeah. and things ha huh. right and what if there is some kind of error in the spelling or maybe let's say the b is capital in my database and over here the user types it in small caps see two things either you leave it it will show no results found okay for capital b bread and you are searching for small b bread either it will do that or what you can do is before actually making the query before actually making the search functionality you convert everything into lower doesn't matter what you put right that is a simple okay. python statement right Single, single one liner with very where it lowers everything and also while storing also you lower everything so that it there is a high chance of matching okay got it and it doesn't have to be like if i type in b r e a so you for a minute uh, i lost you what was the question it doesn't what if i say b r e and b r e a and then let's say b r e a s instead of d then it will show no result if see a basic search functionality the most basic search functionality is simple string matching okay that is what we are expecting okay if you say that yes if you say bres should show something that is related to bread then there has to be some logic that has to be applied right if you have time go ahead for the logic no issues we are not we are not we, we are not stopping you to you know uh, sophisticate your application definitely you can go ahead but we are only keeping at this point we are keeping in mind uh, for the students who are very new to the course okay and that's why we are focused on very basic functionality okay so what we are expecting is simple string matching bread means bread no bread no breads okay that is what we are expecting if that is also done then we will consider it to be a good search for search functionality okay because we are not bothered about how well the logic is written we are bothered about whether you can do certain things in a way or not okay i get it and uh, also there was this thing about predicting uh, like predicting the items how are no, we that is, that is a manual decision manual decision why because let's say if i have a data i should be able to plot it right uh, if i had the wireframe today i would have given you an example okay but for example let's say uh there are three to four data that you want to plot okay the products being bought what are the categories from where the products are bought so these are the things that you are plotting okay so when you have a plot and you should be being let's say you are an admin okay so only admin can see the plots right i won't be able to see what are the statistics for blinkit app because i'm general user right but the admin of this blinkit app should be able to see what are the stats and what are the logic is happening right so if he is able to see trend for a particular project he should be he should be able to um, uh, take certain decision so that is a manual uh, thing right we are not creating any algorithm that gives us the prediction later okay okay because i thought it's going to be something like curated just for the users like we get on netflix and all no 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 you want if you want to do it there is no stopping from it but that is something uh, we are not really you know interested in creating see because see if you are adding any model or mlp or a natural language processing also for that matter it is no, it has nothing to do with web development okay what we are bothered about is whether going to a particular url do you get this page or not right are you able to redirect from one page to other or not are you able to when i click on add the add functionality is happening or not is something we are checking right okay got it got it and about the my cart 
like my god yes i was actually a bit concerned that how am i supposed to actually design the my cart section that should i just keep a table in my database that stores the data of all the users or how am i supposed see, so, to start see so there is a distinction right if we are talking about bookings a booking will be only a booking when i buy it right everything before that is just a cart okay but let's so, say i am a particular user there can be endless number of users for hmm. each user how do i make a cart that is that is something you have to think about in the model okay so maybe if you're not uh, really clear now when we go ahead and study the database right the way models are created uh might click you okay then i was actually thinking that i can have a particular database called cart and then every time a particular user any user hits add to cart it gets stored in that table and then so rather than creating a database you should do create a table no one database multiple tables yeah i get that but in that out of the multiple tables one particular table has only my cart and that's okay no there is no limit on number of tables that you can create so every time a particular user is there i create a new table for no, 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 no. that user no 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 not that i'm saying uh, uh see the things that are getting stored you you have to while creating the database creating the models you'll have to take care of what are the things that i'm storing okay uh, rather than adding a new date new uh, table in a database have a table and attributes designed in a way that this thing what you are saying the carting things happen with a row with an with a record not with any table or column being added okay because adding a table adding a column to the database will require things like migration which is uh, one step ahead of what we are trying to do here okay so like technically it's like keeping a list for all users like a simple python list or dictionary you can store okay. all the you see you can uh, you can store all the users in a table okay you can store uh, if they are simple users if they are admin whatever it is right then you can store all the sections in one table you can store all the uh, section meaning category all the products in one table okay then you then you can create a table which stores uh, the user id the i mean every user will have id right the user id and the product id okay So if user ID one has product ID one two three, these are the product that he has put in his cart. Okay, and one more table with student, uh, sorry, uh, user ID and product or booking ID, let's say. So these are the products that he has bought from the cart. Uh, I mean, see, I can put ten products in the cart, but will I be able to, or will is it a necessary that I buy all those ten? No, right. So there will be two different table, one storing user information and the products that are currently in cart okay and one table that is having user user information and the uh, ids of product that are actually being bought so that's what i'm saying number of tables you have to decide there is no limit on number uh, the limit on the number of tables that you can create but you have to first give a thought on it on what are the tables that i'm creating okay so, so that every record you want to uh, sorry every data that you want to save actually becomes a new record because storing a new record is easier than adding a new column or creating a new table altogether getting this point no okay okay so may not be 100% clear but let's say when we go ahead and uh, design the database we will try to discuss these points okay dipto have you studied dbms as of now yes i have so there is one thing called uh, one to many relationships that's the only hint i can give you right now yeah yes. so relationships are something that we'll be seeing quite in detail here in this course also right so that will help you dipto and that was dipto is it at which yeah. sir yeah. sorry at which week it will be taught uh, talk uh see so there is one week uh, based on uh, relations right so week 4 is more of a database uh, models right so you have uh, uh, so you may have seen mvc design pattern right so there will be one week dedicated to every 
component of MVC model view and controller. All right. So week four is where we introduce Flask, and week five onwards is where we we talk about this database operations. Okay, sir. All right. That's why I am saying not to focus on you know do not focus on uh, the the functionalities or controlling part at this point. Just focus on the front end. What do you want to see on the screen? Okay, add dummy data at this point. Okay, later on we'll study how to actually remove the dummy data and put the data from backend. Then we'll start and uh, go ahead and configure database to our controller, which will update the dummy data. Okay, so we'll we'll have it stepwise. So, so this application that is there, uh, what would be the last? I mean, do we have to go until the payments page, the checkout, and everything, or it is only up to the cart? Up to the cart, and there should be, let's say, an option to buy it all. And congratulations! Yeah, so the uh, it's like uh, the your order has been dispatched or something. No payment and no gateway or something like that, right? We don't want to. Since we are not really bothered about security, we would not want to add a component of payment. So it's just a checkout, and then finally uh, it will be delivered on so and so date. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, how we can add image database images in the databases? So see, images are basically added as blobs. Okay, so just have a uh, understanding of blob. B L O B S. Blocks. Okay, but uh, rather what I would suggest is if you want to really work with images, store all the images that you want in your static files and store the image names in the data database. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you can later refer to database and get that image from the static files. Oh, okay. Generally, why am I saying this? Why am I avoiding storing directly image into the databases? Because blog files are very big files. All right, the conversion of image into a text take, makes it a very long test text. Okay, what is the full form of blob? Binary large object. Okay, so it is a very long binary object that is getting stored in the database. SQLite is a lightweight database. You don't want to add very heavy objects into the SQL. There's a reason I'm avoiding, or I'm asking you to avoid storing images directly into the database. Rather, just store the names and get it from somewhere else. One more thing is what you can do is store all the relevant images that you want on the drive and store the link of drive in the database. Oh, sir, is there any uh, documentation where we can refer for implementing all these? Uh, we will go through, no? In the in the content, we'll go through. In the content means uh, during the uh, project sessions or uh, during the mentor sessions. During uh, see so. Uh, are you in the course this term or you have completed? No, 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 sir. I have completed. So you can go through the live sessions of week four, week five. No, that will there that will give you an idea of how to store certain data. So when I am storing a link, it is just a string, right? What I am saying is create a drive. Mm -hmm. Okay, create a folder in the drive, add all the relevant uh, relevant images, and those can be added on the go also, right? So keep mm -hmm. adding the images there. The links will be generated for the image. Okay. okay, store the links in the database as strings. Okay, and whenever you will render uh, in the image href, add a link rather than image. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Got it, sir. Okay, so that you can. Excuse me. Hello, sir. Having the image. Sir, I have been raising my hands for so, one, one, second, one, second, one second. One second. Let's let's go one by one. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go with Suraj. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I had my hand raised. I was in the queue, and then it was disconnected. Can okay, I okay. ask a question? I yes, just have yes, one, one short question. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, actually, sir, I've completed the front end and made the application. I had a so I went through the when before the actually uh, I went through the document properly. So there is a plagiarism clause. So uh, what I do, uh, in fact, in terms of my uh, on job uh, development as well, I go through the documentation and capture the, for hmm. example, for this project, I have captured a lot of uh, documentation from Bootstrap. Hmm. So uh, I'm not sure, like, uh, because the entire application is my own, including the entire flow, nav bar, and everything, hmm. but I've captured the uh, syn syn synaptics that from that uh, Bootstrap hmm. because they work well. That's the only hmm. reason. 
Hmm. I'm not sure. Like, will it be covered in the plan? No, that's what I said, right? Uh, if you have joined late, then probably you missed. So what I said was, if you go through the net, okay. So if you are talking about an example of, uh, I want to cart a product, okay. So that is the task that I want to do. Okay, I search for that uh, how to cart a product or the logic for carting a product, right? If I see the first five things that will come on the on the Google might give me a code directly, okay. So if you go ahead and simply pick up that code, you'll definitely get caught in the plagiarism because there will be many who will be doing the same, right? But if you're taking the code, if you break down this task into smaller tasks and take the uh, code snippets from documentation. Then uh, you won't be uh, flagged as a plagiarized one. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. uh, that's that's the normally uh, how we do. So uh, right. Yeah. All right. Thank uh, you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Lot. So sir. could you please explain the slides at the left at the end of the session? Uh, what do I have to? Uh, so the slides. I'll come to you, Srishti. Uh, okay, Suraj uh, is on the queue, right? So I'll come to you. Suraj, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, can we use JavaScript in this, sir? Because the frameworks in the first slide don't include JavaScript. No, see, the JavaScript has to be kept bare minimum because we are actually working on the backend development, right? So, uh, functionality, sir. Sorry. Front-end functionality during uh, while rendering pages and all, uh, using JavaScript is easier to render than just plain HTML and CSS. No, so we are not going to do or render directly plain HTML. No, we'll be using Flask, right? Flask will. Um, uh, so, are you are you familiar with Flask? Have you worked with it before? I worked with it before, sir. But I've taken the theory course just this term. I've done CS fifty course before, and I mm -hmm. uh, made a similar app for the final project of that. Yeah. So don't worry. So you will be able to create a very decent app with the Flask without using JavaScript. Okay, sir. Can we use yes, Java yes. Bootstrap themes, sir? Yeah, yeah. Bootstrap you can use, but theme yes, I'm themes. not really in uh, Bootstrap themes. I'm not uh, really in favor of because see. It will add a lot of code, lot of which will be uh, redundant. Yes. Sir. Okay. You will have to keep on adding, either keep on adding back into it or remove a lot of things. So if you are removing ten things out of uh, uh, fifteen things from the theme, rather create yours. Okay. Okay, sir. And, and also, uh, sir, the manufacturing date uh, they have told us to search by now, sir. Mm -hmm. Every product will have a different manufacturing date, and in the same product itself, many op many of the units might have different manufacturing dates. How will we handle that, sir? No, so that can be optional. You can search by the name or category also, not to go into manufacturing date. But we they still want us to store the manufacturing dates of every single product, and that means we'll have to enter the manufacturing date of every unit, sir. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Uh, but then See, you are not working in into lakhs of products, no. Okay. There will be handful. We are talking about very, you know, uh, small scale application where you, me, and the people taking your Viva will have an access to. Okay, okay, sir. And should multiple users be able to log in concurrently? Uh, one user logs in, logs out, and then the other logs in. Logs no, no, like no. That. They should be able to log in concurrently. No issues. Actually, it happens. Okay, but because see, everyone will have their own. Uh, everyone will have their own. See, if the application is deployed. Then everyone will be. Otherwise, everyone will have to have the instance of that application in their system, and then it will act as one to one, one application, one user. So, getting what I'm saying? Okay, sir. So we are. I'm. I'll be just have the files on my own system, so only I can access it. My local host. Yeah. Can meaning only you will be accessing it generally. If you want to add one more user concurrently, it will happen. No issues. You just open in incognito tab, and you can directly uh, join in with okay. different. Only okay. that you will be not you will not be able to see the real time changes happening in the application. Okay, sir. Then what does the additional APIs mean, sir, in the CRUD section? So yeah. additional mm -hmm. API meaning, for example, uh, we use Matplotlib for plotting graphs. There can be things like charges or other things, right? So this is in context of uh, uh, plotting certain things or uh, some APIs to add very basic JavaScript functionality. Right, so that is uh, what we mean. Okay, okay, okay. Meaning, so bootstrap, by bootstrap by itself is a uh, API, right? So you'll be adding CDN. Okay, so okay. that is what we meant. Okay, so thank you. Java, JavaScript is not there in the list. list no, so that's what, that's what, that's what, that's why we are not uh, uh, 
uh, focusing on JavaScript. That's why we are not advising to use JavaScript. No, but you said the additional API is a very basic JavaScript has to be used. So I think no, uh, no, no. Yeah. What do additional API mean? What do additional API uh, might include? Okay? okay. So that is one of that is uh, if I am using matplotlib to plot graphs, there are some issues or there, there is what we call, uh, I just get static plots. If I really want some uh, interactivity with the plots, there is a addition or what we call there is an, there is an extension of JavaScript called chart.js. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to um, uh, embed or link uh, chart.js into my application. That is by itself an API. Okay. 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 Apart from that, uh, uh, for example, if I want to use uh, date, real time date and real time timing, so all these things can, can be done by API also. So any external feature that I want to do and that is possible with external API, not necessarily JavaScript, is allowed, is what I'm saying. Okay, okay. But are the optional features going to be, uh, I mean, are we going to get additional marks for that? Or is it, will there be any uh, credit for yeah, so it? Recommended features definitely will have marks. Optional features uh, are not that evaluated. Uh, I mean, are not valued much. Okay, value much means, suppose if somebody includes one or two uh, optional features, uh, will he get more marks than me? Uh, no, okay. that's what I'm saying. So there will be marks for core and recommended. There won't be marks for uh, additional okay. optional. Okay, optional. Uh, uh, all the optional requirements are just to make your application better in terms of performance and looks. Okay, okay. sir. One, are you going by the queue? I think I have a couple of questions. Uh, that's okay. You can go ahead. Okay, just one. Once uh, there are just three basic questions. You know, when I look at these sites, uh, they are quite uh, front end is very zazzy in mm. terms of, you know, even when you search on product, it displays, you know, different product images and all that. Mm. Can this uh, uh, front end be as simple as, for example, we have week four and we, from week four to week six, there are um, there are graded assignments, you know, programming uh, graded assignments. Uh, right. So uh, can those be as simple as that? For example, if I'm listing down, the products ah. it will appear yeah, with yeah. An update and add link and definitely definitely see the thing is um this is just to give you an idea of what we are talking about otherwise i would ask you to i mean i would advise you to refer to the wireframe that would come tomorrow okay so we wanted to release it before this session but it could not happen so it is almost done we'll be sharing a wireframe and you can see that uh, there is hardly any aesthetic used in that thank you okay? so much because what i feel is really uh, the logic is what really counts because if I have to create something as easy as easy as this one, then it will take hell of a lot of time and it won't add any value to the uh, logic building uh, right. power. Yeah. Right, right, right. So yeah. So and if we really want to do something like this, we'll be doing it in Mac too. Right. So that is more of front end development. Okay. Here we have to focus on back end and how the back end works. How do uh, how does the logic work uh, works as you mentioned mentioned right. Okay. So that's why the wireframe will be something that that has the bare minimum design. Okay, I won't say it is designless, but it has bare minimum design. If you if you uh, target on that, that should be a very good application uh, at the end. Okay. Some of them, some of us have already you know developed almost major a um, uh, major part of it, and mm -hmm. I have followed the simple uh, technique that was you know taught in week four, week six, and week seven, where you know mm -hmm. the interfaces are pretty simple but yet very powerful. You know, hmm. uh, when you want to update or add, as you know, I mean, the links appear uh, against each row. So uh, that kind of is interface I have built. Uh, right, I, hope, right. I hope your wireframe will not be different than, than otherwise I have to rework on it, you know. So no, 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 no. So it will be, see, it will be very similar to that. I won't say there will be table and everything coming one below the other, but it will be very similar to that. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, second okay. question is, sir. And it's sure. that, uh, it's that if you are, if you are very uh, clear with, the idea what was shown in the lab assignments of week four and five and six yes. I, I recommend you to go with that idea okay you don't need to uh, even follow the wire thank you so much in fact i'm so so clear with those you know those four hmm. three weeks were very very good weeks and quite uh, i mean that was those graded assignments were like teaching almost everything uh, right uh, yeah. sir my second question is uh, you know for login 
uh, do I follow the Flask login module or, you know, I have designed something on my own. What I did is I just stored all the user IDs and passwords. Passwords can be encrypted. So I just encrypted and saved them. And uh, I have developed my own mechanism. Suppose if somebody is now trying to buy something from the card, the first thing I check is uh, his user ID also. And when he has logged in, I'm simply passing on that from one template to the other. So I mean, you're using, yeah, yeah. You're using sessions, right? Um, I didn't even go because I enjoyed uh, developing my own logic. I was simply passing that as a parameter to most of the templates, okay. you know. Passing, passing. So, yeah. That's okay, that's so, okay. Sure. So I don't know whether that will do because I enjoyed working that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, working on that. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, there is login module, which is probably everything is built in there. I could mm -hmm. have used it. But my, uh, my humble question is if I have uh, developed something like that, you know, where I'm passing on the user ID, Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then every time I'm checking whether he's the right user, because even, you know, in from the cart, cart is a simple table where all the users selected products are there. So mm -hmm. uh, I have to pick up those that were selected by this particular um, uh, user. And again, I'm when he logs out, I'm again maintaining a flag somewhere. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was a little complicated. I had to spend some time, but I did. Yeah. So, we'll so see, see if, I, if I am the examiner of your project, uh, I would really want to see how it works. If you are able to explain it, I'll definitely give you more marks than last one. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, as far as uh, you are able to uh, explain the logic that you have used, there is no uh, stopping, right? And Flask login is one of the utility which we say you want to use, right? Okay. Secondly, uh, login and I mean a proper login system is anyway an optional. So, how can we mandate uh, Flask login? Okay. Okay. Right. So if you have created your own logic and you're able to explain it, what you have done, what was your idea behind it, it is well and good for you to that. Okay. Okay. No, thank you. Because login concept is a quite a sophisticated one. So I've mm -hmm. read your guidelines very clear and it clearly says that we don't have to think about security and other issues there. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that's it. I think, uh, uh, sir, one, one, as I said, three questions. One last question is, um, uh, thank you. I think you have responded very accurately, exactly whatever I was looking for. Now, the okay. third question is, um, um, uh, you know, some of those optional features that you have mentioned, uh, I'm on that page. Yeah. Um, you said, uh, you know, predicting the demand of a product based on previous trends. So okay. it, this feature has to be built into my package or uh, how do I go about it? Okay. So basically what I would uh, do is as a developer, what I would do is I will have one or two plots. Okay. Uh, I'll think on what I should plot. Okay. First thing is uh, maybe have a plot of what are the products that are being sold. Okay. What are the products that are being bought mm -hmm. frequently? Yeah. Okay. That is one plot. And the other plot would be what category these products uh, belong to. I've added this in the wireframe also. Okay? okay. Most of the things will be clear when the wireframe is out. So let's say we have these two plots. As an admin, I'm watching these two plots and with the help of these two plots, just by looking at them, am I getting some insights where I can make decisions? Okay. Okay. It's not a model based plot. It is not something that is predicting the solution and giving me, okay, do this. It is not suggesting me anything. It is just giving me a plot. Hmm. I should be able to read the plot and take decision. That is what we mean by uh, predict the demand. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, okay. No, yeah. I got it, sir. I will. I think I have not gone to optional features. I would uh, eagerly wait for the uh, uh, for the wireframe. I think that would give me definitely a lot of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So once the wireframe is out, go through it. Have an. Uh, I mean, uh, just go through it. Have an understanding of it. If there are doubts, the discourse is open, and we are going to have this session every Tuesday, right? So sure, we can sir. sure. Sir, uh, again on optional only one, one the last bullet there on optional. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I did is I just wanted to confirm the way I am now implementing that. It is about promo codes. So mm -hmm. what I am doing is uh, when somebody goes to the cart uh, uh, and uh, you know when he has selected the items that he wants to buy, and mm -hmm. the next thing is I've just provided a buy button. Once he clicks on that, then I'm asking him now select one of these promo codes. So hmm. what I'm doing is those promo codes will be fed by the uh, administrator. Uh, so hmm. it's just one little table where the promo codes are there. He can change the promo codes. Simply the code and the percentage that I would like to give. It's as right. simple as that. You know, there are only a couple of fields there. 
so so it will be displayed as a drop down he will select one and then i am simply applying that percentage you know to the total amount uh, i am not really, see when i see these sites these percentages vary from one item to the very sophisticated um, mm -hmm. uh, you know discount structure is there i have right. gone for a very simple one where i am saying okay your total bill is this much you have selected so and so promo code i am giving mm -hmm. you so much of discount discount figure right. is also displayed and the net amount is displayed i think yeah. is that okay that is more than sufficient okay okay okay, okay sir yeah. thank so, you so see the the applications like blinkit so this is their uh, i mean uh, their food and water right so they have to <laughs> somewhere uh, 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 what we call optimize things right discount should not be evenly spread across right so if the discount is given on certain things uh, as 10% then it should be 20% on certain things so basically what they want is their product should get bought frequently mm -hmm. what we are trying to do here is so this is one of the optional just because if you are done with the application you have enjoyed coding it then why not have one more feature to you know work with and make it better oh, yes, that's all yes 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 okay right so we are not looking at see if that was the case then we would have a very large data set where all the product along with their product ids when were they brought how were they transported all the logistics would have would have had also been there right so we are not worrying about those things not we are, we are not going into that detail we are talking about functionally how things work rather than optimizing the uh, you know revenue of the application okay so one sir. clarification yes uh, by the way uh, sir was that clear uh, you have any other question no i am i'm through thank you so much thank you so much okay fine yes sir go ahead sir for the <clears throat> dynamic pricing part dynamic sir. pricing yes yeah dynamic pricing what dynamic pricing is not here actually it is for uh, it was there previous time no it is there na i just read it in my problem statement yes if you refer page number slide number 3 hmm. it is optional but it is there hmm <laughs> okay so what i so far able to do it i just uh, Uh, create a button, mm -hmm. and that button called price change. Okay. And that feature I enable to the store manager because he is the who will take the decision. Right. So once he press that price change, based on some logic, the product price get changed. Hmm. And I just want to clarify the dynamic price changing means. Do you want to mean this kind of feature, or it will get automatically? Uh, updated to a new price based on purchase no 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 you can create a logic and set your own price i even i can you know uh, what dynamic pricing according to me uh, was meaning i mean as minimum as uh, as far as the what we call the functionality goes what i want is if there is a season for example mangoes right so it is summer you want to buy more mangoes the price of the mango should be set high that's all that is dynamic pricing it if it is november i don't want to buy mangoes set the price low i can do it manually with no logic that is also dynamic pricing if you are setting a logic for that it is okay no issues that is no, an added to function. change but to change the price you have to press a button from that the store okay. manager it is that is okay shall i remove that or it make it complete auto based on duration date No, no, no. You can uh, keep it as is. No, if you have already created something, I would say that is sufficient. If you are actually changing the price uh, with that button, so ultimately some action has to be taken, right, to change the price. Yeah, I said just some basic logic. Hmm. So price change has some logic. Once hmm. the store manager wants to change that, he just press that, and automatically in the back end, based on that logic, all the product price get changed. yeah that is uh, absolutely fine no issues the, there is one there is one uh, you know uh, parameter here just make sure that the changes are logical right so it should not for example today the price was 100 i click the button and the price became 50 for no reason right so that should not happen add a parameter where you think uh, price changes are you know proper make sense right that should happen Then, uh, if the numbers are changed, then it will not make sense. Sir, on that one, just to add to Samit, uh, mm -hmm. maybe the way I look at it and the way I am thinking, maybe pretty simple. Uh, see, uh, the the 
the administrator will have uh, you know an interface to update the uh, product details so obviously then he can go ahead and update the price i think i'm just simply putting it that way and from there yeah. onwards whoever is buying i mean the new price applies to him i just went by that such simple com concept hmm yeah that you can you can think it that works even what i said was that right so being an admin you should be able to you know directly go ahead make an edit change the price that's all exactly exactly that's precisely what i did that is fine okay but yeah but what samit is trying to do here is since the prices are dynamic they should change with some logic right so for example that what which i mentioned which is a which is i think is a legit logic right so for example since it is summer the prices of mangoes are high when it is winters it won't be that high right so it changes intuitively mm, yeah but this change can be automatically or you know manually done by admin also okay I think in real life, uh, what happens if you go to a shoe store? There's a clearance sell or whatever, right? And of course, it's a grocery store. Uh, so yeah, usually uh, they may run some promotions and all that uh, store wide, right? Not uh, SKU specific, but store wide. Then you'll go and do a bulk, uh, you know, five percent discount or whatever, right? On across all SKUs or a specific set of SKUs, you can give certain discounts. I think that's a more uh, real life scenario. How you give discounts or price changes? I was actually thinking that what if we could have a linear programming problem, and then we actually optimize the price so that we have the maximum profit. But then, how do we actually implement that over here? Yeah, so that's what, right? Ultimately, if, if you're adding any code, it has to be added in the in the in the controller. How do we configure the controller with the actual app? Uh, is something that you have to think of. But that's what, right? So all the I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it should ha not happen that most of the effort is going into optional requirements. Yes, sir, I, I agree with you because so far, whatever I have done, a lot of troubleshooting takes hell of a lot of time. So, uh, I think uh, to make the critical logic work itself is a is a big job. We are actually not developing a full fledged product as such. So, um, and and the guidelines are very clear. Guidelines are very clear. Hmm. Okay, and so, okay, so okay, don't Thank get me sir. wrong, but this is the first uh, session. We will have a lot of ideas, but when it will be the deadline is two weeks away, we will be thinking of only core, right? So, <laughs> right, so that is something that you have to think of. Get the core functionalities first, then move ahead and do the other things, right? Yes, sir. I think that's a beautiful, uh, I would say, suggestion. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, sir, you... could you please explain sir? the slides? Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So again, raise hands. I'll just take Sashi Kumar because his hand has been raised from very long time. Then I'll go ahead. Okay, Sashi Kumar, if you're there. Good evening, Outside. sir. Good evening. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Tell uh, me. Sir, I want to ask. Uh, I joined a little late. Uh, I want to ask uh, some clarifications. Uh, hmm. First thing is that. Uh, whether uh, I have to do these things in Replit or some other, uh, whether we have to uh, do something in our own system. No, so see, if you, you have to first select, if you want to do it on Replit, you have to, there is no stopping, you can go ahead and do it on Replit. If you are comfortable with uh, any local ID that is working on your system, then you can go ahead and do it on the local no, ID. Uh, actually, I don't have any exposure to any other ID. I, I only know this Replit. That is because uh, for uh, Python and all, we use it. Yeah, yeah. So you can go ahead and do the entire thing on Replit. Uh, so the, uh, the Replit, will, Re Replit will be suitable to do this project, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely. Sure. Sure. Uh, so uh, in Replit, actually, it is based on different languages, no? Hmm. Whether you have to create a Replit, it should be either should be Java or it should be a, a, this. C, uh, no, no, no. You, yeah, it should be a Python Replit. It should be a Python. Python Replit. Because your, your backend which is the actual server will be python so i have to create a python replit python replit yes okay uh, then uh, you told me actually to do these uh, screens no that is uh, login and all so <laughs> that is would be in html no right so uh, so i have to do uh, two replits and uh, uh, no, 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 no. What you can do is see for the starters, you can create a HTML, CSS, JavaScript REPL. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. For the starters. Uh -huh. Okay. Just for understanding how we are going about it. 
Hmm. Or what you can do is create a Python REPL. Hmm. Okay, and then uh, in the in the create file, you can create all the HTML files. Uh, in Python REPL itself. Yeah, in the Python REPL itself, and then when we will go ahead, hmm. you will see that we can run the files. Now the problem is, if you are creating Python REPL, how do you run HTML files? Okay. Right. So the that you that can be done by running a Python server. So what you can do is do this. I'll just I'm just typing. Hmm. Now what is this? You don't have to worry about. We will be re doing this in detail in the uh, uh, what we call it the solve with inspector session. So this is actually uh, this will actually run a server. Hmm. Okay, and then if your files name your files as uh, one of the files as index dot html. Okay, so when you run the server, hmm. it will start running on. Hmm. This. Uh, so this where we have to do this this Python my uh, slash m the HTTP server. This has to be done on the shell. There is shell also right on the REPL right side. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so if you so, uh, to this uh, uh, website, you will see uh, that the index dot HTML that you created will start running. Uh, I mean, start getting rendered. All right. So this is a, a, a long way of doing it. But for the starters, if you're really, I mean, if you're going into creating the uh, only the files that I, I, I told HTML files, you yeah, can create yeah. a simple HTML JavaScript uh, CSS. Rep. Mm -hmm. Then later on, uh, shift all the files into the Python REPL when we will create the backend. Okay. So now I will st uh, start with uh, creating a REPL on uh, this HTML, uh, this one. And do no, this. no issues. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no issues. And do this screen and that is login screen. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I have... uh, then can I can share it on the uh, next session, no? Whether it is correct or no? No, you don't have to share anything because it is a project, right? Don't oh. share it. Just, oh. uh, I mean, uh, just keep it, keep it uh, created with you. And then when we will, uh, so first we will create the templates. Then we'll add. Uh, uh, so these templates are created with dummy data, right? So then you can just add. Anything you want as a data, real time placeholders. Okay, then we'll be uh, create using templates. Okay, and then we'll be using packet. Okay. So at this point for no, this I, week, I, I, I was just asking whether uh, whether I, what I have done is correct or not. I don't know. So whether it has to be checked, you know. That's what I'm asking. Whether we have to share, uh, how can? No, 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 that's what. So you cannot uh, share because we don't want anybody else to get the take the idea from you, right? So we don't want you to share, but uh, uh, see, so you need to, so you can tally it with the wireframe. Okay, we'll be sharing the wireframe now. So you can tally uh, it. Sir, with actually, it. I didn't get the idea of wireframe. What is yeah. that wireframe? So wireframe is the basic, uh, you know, it gives you how a page in its basic state should look and what are the different phases of a particular application. Okay. Okay. When I, so when the wireframe is released, uh, I, I have you taken this course before? Uh, I, I had completed this mad one uh, three terms back. Okay, so then we there we I'm not sure if we shared, but okay, let me no, no. Uh, show you the no. wireframe of previous project. Okay. So it was Jan 23. So it will be shared on our dashboard only. Uh, I think so. Yes. Okay. Share on the dashboard on the app also. Yeah, so ticket show was the uh, the project for previous time. So this is what wireframe looks like, right? Okay, I'll show you. Okay, so you see that this is a uh, the, so this is a page how an admin login should look like, how a user login should look like, right? Then if an admin logs in, what should he see the next? Okay, okay. So I right. can check it myself that whether what I have done is correct or not uh, with the reference to this wireframe. Right. So this will this is regarding the ticket show app. We'll be sharing for grocery store also. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, okay. Uh, so there is no uh, particular color scheme for us. No, no, no. See, but certain things are intuitive, right? Same when look with the red color doesn't make sense, right? So that you have to take care. Yeah, but no colors are your choice. So is it necessary to follow this wireframe only or I can adopt any other thing as my... You can, you can, sir. If you are clear okay. with the idea, see, wireframe gives an idea, right? So if you are clear with idea, you can take any other uh, reference. Okay. Um, sir, I wanted to ask, there will be only okay, one sir, admin. 
yeah that is it right sashi kumar yes uh, i think I, i with this wireframe i will be able to check myself right right yeah you will yeah. be able to that yeah yeah then i will get back if i have a face any difficulty okay sure thank sure you. sure thank you thank you yeah go ahead viraj uh, sir i wanted to ask that there will be only one admin right yeah there see you can have provision to add multiple admins but there won't be any interface to add a new admin are you getting okay what do i mean by interface something like this no so when i open this here you can see that there is a register button but this is only for user okay there won't be a register button for admin okay if you want to add admin multiple admins you can directly open the database and add it in the table manually okay 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 also i thought that there is a there will be multiple admins ha huh? sorry uh, can we do the whole code in the main.py or do we have to distribute the thing your choice okay so we will give you both ways one way is to do it in the single file other way is to modularize things we will give you both ways whatever you feel easy that you can follow okay excuse me sir hmm yeah right sir so we don't need to have a uh, like separate uh, log page for admin register right no no you don't need to okay so we have so to you uh, add- what we are trying to say here is your application should not give an interface to any user to register as an admin right no, intuitively sir, uh, that should uh, happen yes but i am saying that uh, like we are the administrator we are a uh, sortation over app to the proctor in level 2 ava mm-hmm. then during that time like if we have to add an admin so like we cannot have the page for it we have to use database only see we are the proctor and we are creating rubrics in a way what we are telling right so we here i'm saying that you don't need to create interface so how can a question come that create an admin okay uh, right? sir so, uh, this has been a bit of a problem like uh, the level to proctors have been like asking for some requirements which have been made man- recommended like api they have said that it was uh, required there have been complaints earlier okay okay we'll we'll have a look at that So have you gone through the 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 this thing right? Uh, have you gone uh, have you gone through this process of Viva? Uh, no sir, let I was registered for last time but I couldn't complete the project. Hmm. So that's why I am not from some people. Okay, okay, okay. No, no. So I see every time uh, uh, maybe uh, by mistake that may have happened, but we'll make sure that this doesn't happen. Okay. so the recommended will keep, will be kept recommended see it's not that if it is recommended you will uh, i mean you will not lose marks if you have not done that okay yes definitely they possess some value they will be marked right but it's not that uh, it is absolutely required for passing the course for example yes. out of 100 marks the 50 mark student will also pass and a 100 mark student will also pass okay this recommend this so the gap of this 50 marks of between a 100 mark student and a 50 mark student is decided by this recommended features yes, sir so could you please Clear, explain no? those slides yeah 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 y
right so after that session you can start off with creating the templates which will require knowledge of only html and css nothing will be required from this okay as we move ahead we will add jinja to it so then once you are ready with jinja and understood what jinja is you can add jinja in that templates okay then understanding that what html is css is you want to decorate your application make it aesthetically beautiful you will add bootstrap okay what is bootstrap how to use it we will tell you all right then basically your application should have a brain to function right so that brain is nothing but the back end that will be creating with flask okay and that is going to happen week after week okay. right so this is about the technical stack now with that you have to create an application okay having understood all the contents having worked with all the contents you will have to work on an application that will require knowledge of these things because we have given you uh, enough content on that right so what is this application this application is basically this so it looks like something like this but not literally right so you don't have to create uh, as sophisticated application as this is okay the application that you have to create should uh, look very uh, not should not should can look very similar to the wireframe that we provide now what is this wireframe this is a visual reference of what this application should look like what are the uh, what is the flow of this application right so for example if i log in with this i should be able to see this if i click on this button i should be able to see this if i add this data save i should be able to see something added here right okay are you getting so once the wireframe is uh, uh, once the wireframe is released you should be able to see what is there and you should be able to connect with what we are trying to say here okay so with that you re so don't worry about how will i do it just worry about what you have to do now okay with the with the content of week 2 3 4 5 and 6 you should be able to do it gradually i'm waiting okay sir so all these uh, like if i'll go along with this theory course along hmm. with the week so i'll be able to uh, like finish this project till the like till late august till the deadline you should be Okay. Okay. If you thoroughly follow the live sessions, if you thoroughly follow the screen class, uh, ask your doubts, join all the live session. Definitely, you'll be able to. That is fine, right? So yes. now, do I have to go through all the slides at this point? Uh, so just give a brief introduction to like to the slides. Ha. So you see, so this is basically this slide is important to you. Okay. So what this grocery store app? Uh, uh, what does it do? Okay, so it is a multi-user app. That's why, right? So that's why we are creating login form. If it is a single user app, there is no need to log in or authenticate a particular user, right? Yes. So it is a multi-user app. Okay. Now this app has two components. There is one person who will manage all the application, right? The categories that are there in the application, the products that are there in the application. Okay. and there will be one uh, uh, component of this application the general user just as we are for this particular application yeah right right so if i it's it's like flipkart right it's like this it is like big basket i just go to the application log in because i want to uh, i want them to know who i am right yeah. then i uh, i can directly either buy something or put multiple things in cart and buy them all together right so you know this this flow this site flow you are uh, uh, familiar right yeah. now who are who is adding this products in this application who is saying me that okay these are the categories uh, breads and this and sauces and spread who is making this so this is the job of admin mm -hmm. right so admin should be able to add make changes and if required delete all these components okay so this operation of adding reading updating and deleting are called as crud operations of database that will be learning uh, as we go ahead okay okay now let me go back to this so what are uh, now you will need some database uh, connection because you will be storing data right you will be storing user data you will be storing uh, uh, category data you will be storing product data so you will be re requiring database and for that we are creating uh this right now how are we going to create, give this data to the application by the interfaces right so if we see this these are the interface forms right so we give this information get saved and this data gets saved to the database so if i want to save something 
what do i create in the interface right so because you are the developer of the application you will be creating these things right what i will be asking a general user to put in what i'll be asking an admin to put in to create a section or a category or a product clear yeah okay now see this every category can have number of products definitely because see if i am if i am looking at uh, sources and spreads i can see that there are multiple products in this category okay now how do i make sure that this category this product falls only in this category and not any other for that i'll be using relationships in database which will again will be seeing later okay then system will automatically show latest products added that is definitely going to happen because if you are adding something to the database it will anyway show it right related to this we have terminologies like inventory everything that you see is an inventory because if it is not there in the inventory it will not be visible okay section and category section meaning the the previous page and section or category is the previous this is the section and categories Why is it no wait this is the section and categories okay cold drinks and juices is one of the category of uh, of grocery right snacks and munchies are one of the categories of uh, uh, of the uh, grocery if i click on that category i should be see i should be able to see the products that are very specific to that category so those are the products okay. clear with these two things yes. this one and two okay dynamic pricing we talked about mangoes and seasons right yeah okay now this is so the this is optional right yeah this is all so this is uh, overall what you have to do with the application now what we have done is everything that you are doing here have been divided into three categories okay one is all the core functionalities that is if you want to pass this course you have to have these uh, 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 what we call functionalities in your pro uh, project okay so that's why we have this admin and user login definitely right inventory management so what do i mean by inventory management to be able to create update delete right and who is going to do that store manager as i said there will be only one person for that right so this is only for store manager okay so there are basically three persons here one is the user another is the admin and another is the store manager right? no so admin and store manager are one in the same thing that's what okay. i said in the very big big thing right yeah, yeah. so just make sure i mean just keep this in mind the store manager admin and inventory manager all these things these are the terminologies that you will see often all these three mean the same okay okay now uh, so this is about the management can a user uh, create a product create his own product no no so it will not be for user therefore i'm uh, therefore it is written here only for store manager okay now there is one more functionality is called as search this is probably the most basic functionality that we would want in any application right you are using instagram flipkart uh, mintra amazon everything you use there is a search functionality okay this search is both for this is for both user and admin generally who sh who should have this functionality ah uh, generally user must have yeah so you keep it for user why do you want to do it every day okay so okay. it's not required for admin it is not required if you want to do definitely go ahead okay it will okay. be convenient for admin if they are with a search section. yeah so now you are making sense right so now once you once you go ahead and understand what the what the things are happening you can by yourself uh think that okay this is important this is important i should do this i should do that right yeah okay now the next thing is core functionality by products who should be able to do this yeah and uh, the user user right so now you know who, what are the task of admin what are the task of uh, user and why is it core if i am not able to buy products why am i using this application yeah. Yeah. right yeah. okay yeah. recommended so there are something called as api okay don't worry about this this is one of the recommended feature that you can have in the application okay so all these things will be taught and uh, taught everything will be taught every word in this thing will every word in this slides will be taught okay now what is this optional for example you are not very good with html css styling is not mandatory okay see you can create an html form with a word and a field you don't need to design it you don't need don't need to position it if you are if that html form takes the value and submits it it is a good html form right so there are two things for web application the core uh, feature the back end the controlling part and the look of the application aesthetics of the application 
okay since app dev 1 or mad 1 course is a back end uh, oriented app, uh, course we are not really bothered about stylings and aesthetics but we will tell you how to do it do it right this is where uh, this is what we will we'll be learning in saturday session css html bootstrap <laughs> okay fine there is proper login system there are frameworks for this which we will be teaching you not required okay export oh, I, i i think you were there when i explained what export was oh yes okay then predict demand again we had a discussion on this promo code i'm sure you know what promo code is yeah okay so these are all optional why have i gone very briefly into optional because see if you are it's not true uh, It's, it's not that it's not required it's that it is probably you can think about it when you are almost done with the up to this page yeah right the last is uh, i'm not going to this right so you you understand what you have to create yeah okay sir. okay so this will be i will be yeah i will actually go into details of this what is this report what it should have what this video should have what should be the code that needs to be submitted but i guess there is a time for this right so we will be going through this slide in in a later when you are in the stage of submitting your project okay sir fine fine okay now you can go through this slides once more you can then later go on to the buyer frame have a look at it and then decide on what you have to create okay okay sir thank you so much sir. okay so yeah there is one more hand is jay right hello sir hey, i have been i have been it's not that i'm ignoring but i have been not able to follow the questions on chat okay if there is anything that i missed just point me uh, point that question to me i'll try to answer okay yes go ahead jay hello sir yeah yeah go ahead okay uh, if user buy something of for example two product so both will have same order id or different order id or which one is correct i, I mean so the product id will be same i mean see the thing is um, uh, so for ID. example yeah for example you create mangoes as product you are not going to create mangoes again and again right so once the product is set once the product name is set the product id will be set okay you getting if you want to buy multiple mangoes in multiple then you just have to increase the quantity that's what we have uh, that's what we have added in the wireframe also right for example if i want to buy milk so i will not be you know buying 1 liter milk three times if i want to buy 3 liters milk right i'll be adding 1 liter milk and then keep it uh, then it will ask me for how much do i want right so then i'll add three product id will remain same i'm saying actually i'm trying to say if user buy two different things two different mm -hmm. product then mm -hmm. it will have same order id or different order id order id that particular order will have same order id see if you okay let me go to this for example if i if i add coca cola soft drink once okay i ordered it paid for it then again i uh, ordered sprite will the will the order id remain same or different if i have a list of something for example five things i want to i want to buy from grocery store it will give me the same uh, bill for all this product that's what right yeah i understood that's what i'm saying so here if you see if you want to add five different products you add five different products into the cart yes. once the product is uh, once number of products are added into the cart one buy button will be there which will be buying all the product right so order id for that product all five products will be same okay okay right order id has nothing to do with product one product five products once you click buy the order id is one for that one buy okay and one more thing uh one yeah. uh, do we have to receive quantity in fraction or in uh, integer like 1.5 kg 2 kg or it is 1 kg 2 kg 3 kg that is okay that is you can decide no 1.5 kg it would it would be good if you put it in fraction okay and javascript is mandatory for this no javascript i am saying it's not required okay okay javascript is not required if uh, i mean see certain things for example see if you see this search chocolate search curd it is changing by itself right so this is happening by javascript unless you want this kind of functionality there is no, no need of javascript 
okay and one more thing uh, yeah. when admin delete something we have to uh, ask for uh, confirmation right hmm. so it is done by javascript or we can do it without javascript also you can do it without javascript also so do we have to uh, show another web page for this confirmation yeah that is something after okay 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 or you can simply use alert right that much javascript is allowed okay okay okay, okay. so there is one week called as vk i'm not sure if it is after 8th august or before that if it is before that we are going to work on javascript okay so we'll be actually introducing javascript then right we'll work on one small topic of javascript where i'll uh, give you how to work with javascript right if that is before the red line you can add that uh, i mean you can make use of javascript there for things like alert and all but if you don't want to do that you can create a different uh, i mean to actually confirm you'll have to create a different uh, uh one way of doing it is to create a different page and make a confirmation if you don't want to do that there is something called as models and alerts in bootstrap which you can use okay so you don't you don't need to have knowledge of javascript to actually have prompt of bootstrap uh in your project right okay we'll see that if required okay and one more thing i have both project in same term med1 and med2 oh. and it is mentioned in uh, pdf tag problem statement will be same for both project um, but it is uh, in the email it is showing different problem statement hmm yeah we'll clear that i mean see there are i mean many students like you have confusion on that uh, we'll have a proper statement and make announcement on that okay okay so actually who has to work on which project if you can work on multiple projects so a clear announcement on that will be made okay okay yeah thank you that's all right okay yeah uh dipto uh so for this week we just have to make the front end right and yeah. for that tomorrow you will be sending the wire so we actually yes. start working from tomorrow yeah yeah you can Actually, I have completed Mad One course in January twenty twenty three. So hmm. I thought. Yeah, I yeah, definitely. Start. It would be good to start early. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it. Okay. Is that all? Any other questions? Yeah, that's it. that's all for from my side. Okay. Anyone else? Any other question? Anybody hands this? Okay. Let me check. Nobody has just. I just want to ask one thing. Um, can you um, suggest me or guide me something about the documentation part? So far, I have written a lot of code. Now I want to make a proper documentation. Is there any means uh, automatic tool is there? So from my code. Uh, no documentation for the what you meant is uh, the report. No, not that project report. I'm hmm. talking about uh, the various logic that I have built huh. in the Python. If I want to have a good documentation against that, so huh. that anyone can refer easily understood right. what I right. Can you guide me? Just use uh, Docs, Google Docs. See, it has something called as code blocks. It is an extension. Okay, it is called as code blocks. If you paste the code and uh, render it, I mean, what we call uh, format it with code block, the actual text is different. The code will appear differently. Okay, so that is something you can use. That is one thing. Secondly, you can use Python notebook, Jupyter notebook. Okay, it is a very good uh, markdown where you can uh, uh, represent what the code block is, where the code block is, what are its output, if that there is any textual content you want to write. uh if you want to give hierarchy to the textual content or can be given okay no, but, uh, but that part i have to write right hmm but i want uh, something based on my code the documentation will be auto generated oh is it then you might have to use some ai tool chat gpt maybe oh. but why i mean see it is better to do it by yourself no because even the content that you want to write may it might add 
if you are using any if, hmm. if, if you are using any from fuel, base is given through auto then i make some changes to shoot in my way that i need less effort that that what i mean okay see the thing is uh, at this point i am not sure if there is any tool like that but uh, uh, i mean if you want to do it without any load actually uh, do it by yourself with uh, python notebook that would be better i guess okay if you want any automated tool i'm not really sure or something at this point maybe i can get back to you on this yeah aditya want to speak something no sir just a question after us Go ahead, go ahead, tell me. Uh, sir, if you can move to the page three of the PPT. Hmm. Uh, sir, each product will have manufacturer expiry date, so hmm. we have to include both or either of them. Depends. I mean, if you want to do both, you want to do one, you want to do two. No issues. Any okay. specific And reason yes. you are asking? No, I was just uh, like uh, the examples that we have, Blinket and others. Uh, they usually refer that uh, the address will be on the packaging. So, like mm. we have to state them ourselves, or like what we can do. State it yourself. Uh, it would be good to give both, right? Because okay. then what we can do is make. I mean, it is not required at this point, but make a logic to remove products that are expired, things like that. And also, sir, system will automatically show the latest products added. How do yeah. we achieve that? Uh, so there is, there is one. That's what. So there is one. The, you can have one more field where it is added date, right? Created yeah. date or creation date. So these are the minimum fields you can you would want. You can add fields, right? So if you want something that which are the latest product, just add one more field where it says uh, the date and time it is added to the product right or to the inventory okay, okay. so okay. that will give you the latest products and also sir you have said that uh, javascript we have to use bare minimum hmm. but if we are doing both the mad one and mad two project uh, the same statement so hmm. we have to create uh, two separate instances or we can use uh, javascript no. in two, two separate instances okay sir. because see uh, everything that you create in this project everything of it will be not required in mad okay yes. so there will be lot of things that you that that will go redundant all right yes. so it's better to create keep the question statement same but question statement meaning only the heading remains same everything yes. inside changes if you go through the question statement you will see uh, so backend okay, that, will be remain same right yeah backend to very to that's what i said right backend to some extent remain same but everything yeah. else changes to a lot so it's better to keep two different instances right because uh, in mat2 pro uh, project you will also be working with uh, node modules so see that will not uh, have any issue when you are representing the mat2 viva but in mat1 viva for no reason you will have to install mo node modules right we don't yes. have that much time yes okay, okay so to create uh, i mean create two different instances and it will be better because then you will be able to segregate out what is required for mad1 what is required for mad2 yes having a single project will be lot of cluttering will be there yes i'm sure only about the front end i was asking hmm. yeah yeah no so they can look same no issues yeah okay yeah. okay yeah okay so there are no doubts i'll just go through the the chats quickly yeah so db fields one question good question so db fields which are which have given here these are the bare minimums anyway if you if i had not given you would have yourself taken these right but these are the bare minimum you can add more fields to this but these are the minimum fields required okay so so this one is still there you can uh, this is the answer to this question right so same issue. okay so i have read till this point predict demand on product base on the previous end does this feature need no, no right so i said if this has to be a manual decision that the admin takes lab assignments are very 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 important go through them try to solve each and every okay because they will by themselves give you an idea of how to go about project 
yeah so yeah lab assignment will directly help you right so they are very important Uh, also, sir, one small thing. Uh, in one of the weeks of May, uh, day one, sir, in screencast, they use some kind of tool to like visualize the table, to draw the ER diagram. Hmm. So, is there some kind of tool which we can use? Yeah, yeah, you I can mean, just so, for our. So to visualize ER diagrams, is it? Yeah, mane. The one sir used it was a bit like I couldn't use it once I have a particular database for myself. Okay, so, I'll uh, I'll get back to you with this because um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I don't recall the name, so I'll get back to you with this. Okay, I mean, you want a tool that draws uh, from the schema draws the ER diagram. Yeah, I'll just provide the dot db file and it will just draw me. Right. So I'll I'll get back to you with the name. Okay, not sure either. That's it, and okay. uh, we have a, a match to session right now. So I'll be leaving. Sorry? We have a match to session right now. Yeah, yeah. So if there are no doubts, you can drop up. Yeah. Thank you, sir. If there are, uh, yeah. So others also, if there are no other doubts, you can drop up. I'm just going through the chat if there is anything that I missed. Okay. If you have flagged with plagiarism, do we get to know which part? Uh, uh, not directly, but if you are sure that if you, if you have not uh, copied from anywhere, you can contest. When you contest, we'll show you. Okay. Okay. So I guess that's all from the chat. Hmm. Yeah. So Sunita, you want to speak something? Uh, sorry, sir, I unmuted uh, by mistake, but since I've unmuted, I'll ask you, sir. Uh, sir, I am new to this mad one, and uh, right now the screencast, I've not been able to do it, and I'm not sure what all softwares are to be installed to actually uh, do something on my Microsoft uh, Windows system. Hmm. So, um, I mean, would that also be covered uh, in the lab session that we'll be having on Saturday, or should I come prepared with some few things installed on my computer? No, that will be prepared. I mean, see, we will be working on Replit, so you technically require nothing. Okay. 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 And uh, later on, after that, we'll be working on VS Code, which is a complete Windows thing. Okay. So, so all the sessions that I take, practical ones, are Windows based. Okay. Okay. So everyone working on Windows and Mac can easily follow. Okay. Okay. Fine, sir. Because I have not been able to practice anything as such from week one or week two screencast because I am not sure. So how what to is C? Okay. Uh, so probably you are stuck with the touch command, right? Yeah. Don't do the see what what is touch command doing in the screencast? Ah, uh, it's basically connecting to the um, server. No, it is creating a file. How do you create a file on Windows? Uh, right click new file. That's yeah, right, it. right, right. So if you are if you are if you can do that, you can follow the screencast. See, okay. once the file is created, index.html, after that everything is HTML, right? So I, I create that index.html as a simple notepad file, right, sir? Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You create is no notepad file meaning the extension has to be HTML. Right, I understood. Okay. Ah, so once the file is created as HTML, you can so you can use this. Uh, I mean, you can open it in Notepad, mm -hmm. add the text to it, mm -hmm. save it. Okay? okay, and then you'll see once it is saved as HTML, ah. it will appear with whatever is the default browser you are using. Okay. Okay. In most cases, it will be either Chrome or Microsoft Edge. Right. Right. Double click it; it will open in browser. Okay, so the same codes which Sir is doing in screencast, I can type it onto my notepad and then save it as an HTML and it will work fine. Hundred percent. So okay. that is what Sir is doing, but he is doing on Ubuntu. So he is using command to create file. Since we are using Windows, we'll use right click to create file. That is the only difference. Okay, okay, got it, Sir. Then I will start doing it then. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other doubt? Anyone else? 
we are not creating any server right so there is no point of connecting to server and things like that yeah yeah because sir seems to be doing that sir in the screencast yeah. so in one of the in in, in one of the uh, lectures you might see netcat and ubuntu and wsl Mm. don't worry about those things yeah it kind of gets a little um, intimidating when i see all those things so mm. that's the reason yeah. i so, only started actually yeah start screen screencast after 5 minutes i mean yeah. you start the screencast skip the 5 minutes and then see okay okay sir yeah and sir i intend to do the project this time i've taken it up i'm not sure if i'll be able to do it but i do mm. intend to do it so mm. uh I mean, as you said, we parallelly go about do, creating those HTML pages and everything, right? Mm -hmm. You should be able to do. Okay, and it, do it the same way as you mentioned. I do here, do it on a notepad and then put it as an HTML. No, no we'll we'll get better. This is okay. just the beginning, right? So, okay. uh, in the next session, in Saturday session, probably we will be doing it on Replit. So that is one step forward than Notepad. Okay. 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 And then later on, we'll be doing it on. any local id so it will be not confined to replit also it will not be confined to any notepad file so we'll be working it working on uh, vs code we might work on sublime text so everything right okay. so we'll get better with uh, every session fine sir okay uh, because i am a working professional i don't get time actually to connect with the ta or anything so it's only your help that uh, i mean i i may be able to take in, in between will you be able to take 1 11 am to 1 pm on saturdays yeah that i would be able to do it yes that should be okay because okay. that is where we have sessions okay fine sir thank you okay so if there are no other doubts shall we close the session we have already passed eight I, i guess that is good for the starters you can work on what i've said right the templates and then we'll move uh, gradually we'll move forward thank you very much sir ashi had an issue hmm uh, so you said that um, we can store the images in google drive and then pull the hdf from the drive and then pass it to i think you don't want us to store it on the as a blob hmm. because of the size could you just tell me if that you, you meant google drive or what Which drive you meant exactly? Google Drive. Was it clear to me? Google Drive, and then on our Google Drive, like the student Google Drive, that's the one. Uh, no, no, our Google Drive, no student. So this, uh, I mean, student whatever. Google Drive, I mean. Whatever. Ultimately, you want the link, so it doesn't matter which one. Okay. I shared the YouTube link. Okay, so Mr. Yeah, so yeah, Bharat. Uh, the thing is, see, you only need the link and access, right? So the link that you're accessing should mm -hmm. be, you should have the access. Okay, so it doesn't matter which Google Drive you're working on. So what if I mean, when when we are running it for the Viva and everything, it's stored on my computer, and I, mm -hmm. you know, I change the photos to, and I'm keeping it on the static file, obviously. Uh, I mean, the okay. static folder. So why can't I use it like that? Why do I have to have it on Google Drive and all that stuff? Yeah, that's what I said. So very beginning, what I said was you keep it locally in your system okay. and the name, that right? Is so that right. is that is where you start off with. Okay, if you don't want to store, if the images are so many, you don't want to store it on your local machine, then use drive. Okay, that's what I said. Okay, maybe I missed that part. Okay, thank you. So yeah, much. yeah, yeah. So static, keep all the images on static. That is probably the best way. Okay. Okay, fine. So I guess that would be it for today's uh, session. Uh, I hope there are no more doubts, and if there are doubts, we'll try to clear it in coming sessions. Okay, so tomorrow also we have a session that is activity practice for week two. Okay, we'll try to create some doubt, uh, create meaning, clear some doubts on for week for HTML, CSS, and things. Okay, so see you all tomorrow, and uh, have a good night. Okay, I'll close the session now. Thanks, everyone.